The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect those of the Barber's Chat Network, our great partners at HMB Media, or any of our media peers. We're just five idiots who love sports and love to talk shit. If you're offended easily, then this show isn't for you. And for those of you who aren't offended easily, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Remember, it's only entertainment. Before we start the show, we want to thank our sponsors, Pillars. Pillars is the best clothing line in the Chicagoland area. If you're looking for a dope hoodie, a sweatsuit, shirts, shoes, or even stuff for your kids, Pillars is where you should go. You can visit any of their four store locations in the Chicagoland area or visit PillarsClub.co and order online. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of I'm Not Gonna Hold You, Man. It is Friday, March 22nd, 2024. Man, I am your host, Scott. You know to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Barbershare Scott. Follow the Barbershare Network at Barbershare Net on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, follow JR Bang and that's JR Bang on all social media platforms. Follow HB Media, HB Media TV on Twitter, HB Media on Instagram, and of course, get in tune with our Patreon, man, patreon.com backslash Barber's Chat Network, as you see right there on the screen. You can get the, uh, the the local hour, which we do exclusively on the Patreon, talk about all Chicago sports, and of course, you can get the midweek show halftime as well, a whole bunch of other things we offer on the Patreon, and of course, get in tune with our sponsors, Pillars. You can go to pillarsclub.co, or you can follow Pillars underscore club on Instagram, and of course, visit any of the three store locations in the Chicago land area. We have got a very packed show for y'all today, man. Uh, Dante and Mikey will be joining us later in the show. Courtney is off today. Uh, my brother Flows will be joining. The homie Mike Willis will be joining. And we also got a, another special guest, the homie Tosin, will be joining us later in the show. Before we bring our guest in, Bang, how you feeling today? Feeling good, man. How you doing today? I'm doing pro- doing pretty good. I mean, we, we we getting to the finish line of, the, of this NFL draft thing, man. It, it, things uh, are feeling good. I feel like for the first time this week, the fan base was united for the first time in a long time. Okay. I feel like so. I feel like we're getting into a positive uh, direction. Pro day, here. pro day, pro day. Christmas happened. Pro, pro day, Christmas yeah. happened this week at, at USC, man. So speaking of USC, uh, well, Los Angeles, California, in general, man. I wanted to bring in our first. Yes, man, we've got the homie Trevon Edwards, man. What's going on? AK no, also known Black Trey. What's up, y'all man? Not What's up, man? Y'all got commercials, y'all got merch, <laughs> y'all got disclaimers. What's going on, man? Hey, I, need, man. I, need to, I need to get down with the program, man. <laughs> What's up, man? Y'all signing people? Yeah, man, we, we, we doing our thing, man. Got the whole layout, man. Whole Death new... Row deals. Yeah, exactly, Death exactly. Deals. Yeah, we, we got some new... Since the last time you've been on here, we, we, we have upgraded a while, man. Uh, If you're not in tune with this man, you need to follow him on Twitter at Etrevon. You can follow him at, at, on Instagram, Etrevon Edmonds Edwards on, on Instagram as well. Get in tune with uh, BOMM, which is the Black Opinions Matter uh, Media Network. And, of course, get in tune with Count the Dings, man, which is a great uh, podcast network y'all got over there. I also want to give you a shout-out too, man, because I was telling Bang when we started the show, before we started the show, is that uh, you guys had the True Hoop uh, podcast like a couple of years ago, and I remember one right. of my first on-air appearances was on there with you guys, Mariano, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, my homie Waz, of course. I see Waz all the damn time out here, and uh, Jade, of course, obviously, man. Uh, we had good times on there, man, but good to have you on, brother. How you been feeling? Oh, man, I'm good, man. I'm blessed, man. Just, you know, just really grateful um, just to, you know, see another day and and, and, and and watch this crazy sports going on, man. 
a lot, a lot of crazy sports going on, man. You are out there in the belly of the beast right now in New York City. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to get into the Knicks in just a minute, but want to start off with the city you're from, Compton, uh-huh. California, man. Uh, we we had a good conversation with last time. He was only like a couple years ago. We talked about like the, the differences and like the similarities between Compton and Chicago. Yeah. Big week for Compton this week. The <laughs> legendary Dr. Dre got mm-hmm. his Hollywood star this week. Finally long overdue. Yeah. Uh DeMar DeRozan almost choked the nigga out last night uh, in, the, in, the, in the in the Rockets Bulls game. Mental health matters. Mental health matters. Mental health matters. Exactly. And of course, Kendrick Lamar, man, uh, just just stirred shit up last night. I was watching Tokyo Vice last night. I got a text from my man Al Patron, and he texted me, "Yo, listen to this. Listen to Kendrick." I'm like, "What you talking about? He's on the Future album." I was, like, "I'm listening to the Future album this weekend when I'm doing." She said, "No, listen to that shit now." So mm-hmm. I stopped what I was doing. When I tell you I had that verse on repeat for like two hours, it was, it was crazy. What did you think about, uh, you know, the verse and Kendrick basically, you know, storming his way back into the scene? You know, everything that's going on this week. Oh, man. Man, shout to Kenny, man. Honestly, um, well, I thought it was fun. Um, you know, there, there are three talented rappers, Drake, you know, J. Cole and Kendrick. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of slight. There's a lot of. You know, like they try to do, they try to do Kenny like how they do Mike Jordan. Like, ah, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he 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 the goat. He he allegedly the goat, but he he took time off. He only played fourteen years, and you know, who cares? If he won six rings. You know, our goat played twenty one. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's like, yo, Drake ain't took no breaks. He ain't took no breaks, and just because he putting out consistent music doesn't mean that it's all fire. I yep. look, I rock with all three artists. I'm a big fan of Drake, big fan of J Cole, definitely bias with kenny um but i liked it it shook things up and i think that's where 2024 should be is about competitiveness you know what i mean even in the podcast space i think everybody's just so sensitive and and used to like everybody just kind of allowing everybody to kind of bully this scenario instead yeah. of just like oh i got punched in the face and now how would i respond exactly exactly man and i'm, I'm a big fan of all three as well i, I i'm a bigger Kendrick and Drake fan. I was a massive Cole fan when I was in college. Like, you know, I was a massive Cole fan, but I, I'm still. That's why you can relate. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 exactly. Like, I, 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 yeah, he made I, Sally May raps. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, Friday Night Lights was my life in 2010. Mm-hmm. So I really, really related to that. Uh, I've been a Kendrick fan since day one, but I've always been outside of Jay. Kendrick mm-hmm. is my number two. Like outside of Jay, that like Kendrick is that. So mm-hmm. I also feel like I'm one of the people who they I can appreciate Drake. But I also like, you know, hitting the Drake fan. Like, my, of course, you know, Pavy. Pavy, uh, it took Pavy about 45 minutes last night to ex- to a- embrace the fact that that verse was cold. Oh. <laughs> he, he was on his Drake fan, like, oh, it, that was all right. I mean, to be fair, like, Drake is the better artist of the three, right? He makes the universal music that's played everywhere. It's socially acceptable. It's in, like, most Def was not trying to diss him. It's yeah. literally true. His music is being marketed in target it's literally yeah. marketed in starbucks it's marketed in any business you could pull up his name and i'm in the advertising space he is in every deck yeah you know what i mean like he's the most marketable of the three you know what i mean with the most appeal that's we're not taking away from that but when you actually think about rap when you think about the sport and not saying that he can't he ain't got a sharp pen his pen is nice yeah. but we need a break from him you know him and chubb side missions that, that, that tweet was hilarious. <laughs> that was that tweet. I don't know who said that. Um, and I really think, like, again, he's sharp, but I think it's very playful. And I, I, I want to get back to like the actual, like, I don't even think Kendrick like said anything like really, 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 really crazy. You know what I'm saying? I think it was just more so like, hold up. It was disrespectful. <laughs> it was disrespectful. Y'all first yeah. person shooter. I'm not about to just, you know, and that's a whole th- another thing. I listen. That's how first person shooter was. I listened to it and I let it go by. Yeah. I listened to it like, oh, them boys rapping. Shout out to that. I ain't take a I ain't take, I ain't listen to the stepper line. I ain't listen to like, oh, Kendrick and Cole. I mean Kendrick and Drake, but I'm Muhammad Ali. Like yeah. getting it all to a point of like they healthy sparring. But then I seen some shit last night where they was on like on tour and they hugged and he was like. Drake doing the pandering thing of like, yo, you which he see. always does, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it like it like low key make Cole take off his armor a little bit, yeah. So he can cut it, kind of like, all right, let me get him out of the way. 
and then I can kind of go do my thing again. And like, can he like, man? Fuck all that. Like, let's let's yeah, bump. Yeah, let's yeah, exactly. Bump. Yeah. But you know, I don't what? care what I liked. You know what though? Like, like Drake, Drake, I'm not worried about in this. Mm -hmm. This is more Cole and Kendrick. Because I believe that Cole and Kendrick are the only two rappers in the world right now that actually want to be the best rapper in the world. Mm -hmm. And also, if you go back to even early Kendrick and Cole, you go back to High Power. Mm -hmm. Like, remember, it was rumored for them to do an album together. I don't know how their relationship is right now, but I would assume that they still keep it cool and cordial. So yeah. for them, I think that was just, hey, man, that's the homie. I'm I'm sparring with the homie, you know what I'm saying? It's Rocky three, Rocky and Apollo at the end, you know what I'm saying? You know, with the end with the boom. Mm -hmm. Drake on the other end, that that Prince, that Prince Michael Jackson line. That's Drake. That woke me up right there. That now that <laughs> when I heard the song finally yeah. this morning after seeing everybody text messages, it's like, okay, I see what I see what you on, Kendrick. But when he did the Prince line, I said that man don't like Drake. Yeah, he don't well, like him. <laughs> what stood out to me even more outside of that, and uh, shout out to somebody in the chat said, "Don't let the Kendrick verse distract you from the fact that future album was crazy." It was, but also, you know, whole, you know what's crazy? I tweeted this out this morning. Future got another album coming in two weeks. Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> another <laughs> album. Everyone. And and let's not forget the intro. He shoot about Drake. Drake. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm gonna be honest on the power rankings. You, you want me to be honest? Yeah, go ahead. Future number one. I'm not mad at that. I said yes. No, no, no. That. Future is the best rapper because on their <laughs> off days, who they listen to? Future. Pluto. Pluto, Pluto got it. I tweet Pluto. yesterday. He's on my Mount Rushmore. He's been holding us down for about 14 years at this point. Like, I remember the first time I heard Future and it's consistency. Like, he's around. Like, you always say Drake is around, but everything he drops isn't fire. Future is around in its heat. Like anybody else, I'd be like two albums in that short amount of time is too just too much music. It's not flamed out. It's not. Yeah, he did it five years ago with Future and Hendrix, and those albums were crazy and two completely different things, man. But let's uh let's let's pivot a little bit. Let's talk about some hoops, man. You're in there in New York. The Knicks are uh, uh, having a really really great year. And one thing I say about Knicks fans, I always say I, the, the comparison I make between Knicks fans and Bears fans, I say Bears fans are the, the football version of the Knicks. And I say that because of this a very uh, iconic franchise, maybe not known for winning, uh, a very passionate fan base who sometimes teeter on delusional uh, a national uh, view of them. where They just like making fun of them more than getting actual realistic takes off them. And also they're known for their iconic you know, venues, Madison Square Garden, Soldier Field. And so this should have happened a really, really good year. Jalen Brunson looking like that contract was actually a steal. Uh, from what you know, from being there in New York, I saw you tweet a couple weeks ago, the city's going to be on fire, like when the playoffs actually start. You've been in a couple games, man. I saw you uh, courtside with Jamal Crawford, uh, Jeff Ray. I call him Turtle. I know he's Proctor, but he'll be telling, yo, he, Turtle is one of my, was my favorite entourage character outside of Ari Gold. That, that's with me, but you was courtside the last couple games, man. Tell me what it's been like in New York. Is it is it more of a realistic we have a chance this year, or is it kind of like the usual Knicks fans just getting excited thing? Well, let me get this out there, out the way. I'm a Bulls fan first. Yeah, exactly. We know that. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is my first year not being actual technically media, so I'm coming mm -hmm. home. Give me Next season, I'm back. Crazy tweets, <laughs> frustrations, all that other stuff. This year, I'm just kind of vibing. I'm sitting in arenas. I'm just checking it out. I'm learning how to be a fan again. Yeah. I have to learn how to do that. I ain't, you know, debating with anybody. Um, but the energy's definitely been been, been there. The takes have been piping hot. Um, kind of frustrating because I want more for the Knicks fans. I want them to actually experience what they've experienced in 99, what they experienced in, you know, uh, and other, you know, like then when they actually won something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like not just making it to the playoffs or actually having a decent roster. Like that's very low tier of them, especially for the venue that they, they have in the, in the, in the passionate fans that they have, you know what I mean? So um, I, I think before you get excited, they got to reach a, 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 a Eastern conference finals first, you know what I'm saying? Because like these are, they, we're beyond the stage of just making it to the playoffs. Tibbs have brought that, that mentality already. Like where they're defending, they they got identity, they figured it out, um, and the front office finally got it right and brought the right guys in there. I mean, you know, they just battled some health issues, but at the end of the day, 
they got to make it, man, To before they start making claims of, like, this is the best Knicks team in a long time. I think – or even the same thing, like, Jalen Brunson is very good. I like him. Uh, I'm a fan of him. But, like, let's not disrespect Patrick Ewing. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm seeing I'm seeing some stuff that I'm just like, I, it's not sitting right with my soul. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait a minute. Who out here disrespecting Patrick Ewing? Like, what are we oh, doing here? What's they going, all what's, doing that. I ain't seeing shit. What, what's being said? Because I that just – I mean, they just saying, like, yo, this is, like, he's, like, the second coming. You know what I mean? And I get oh, it. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Again, there's a lot of you know. Again, like 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 Scott said, delusion. There's a yeah. line. There's a line. But I also don't want to steal joy. I don't want to steal joy. Joy is there. You know what I mean? Like you could be a Knicks legend by just playing hard, right? Playing hard. <laughs> you you literally could play hard. Yeah. I, like I said, wasn't Jalen got traded many moons ago? We came back. I love you, Wilson. I'm like, bro, you was here for a blink. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he played hard in that uniform. Same thing I asked. What's up? Why Larry Johnson? I'm, you know, Knicks legend, but Knicks legend. but we got him on the bad back years. Okay, Marcus Canby, Latrell Sprewell. You'll become an ambassador before your net before your jersey actually go up there. The next person to probably get their jersey hung up is Carmelo, right? Yeah. And that's even up for question because they just. They didn't have much playoff success, yeah. Yeah, like, so it's, like, it's even tricky, man, and it's, like, for a franchise that haven't won anything in, like, 40, 50 years now, it's hard to, like, say, like, ah, y'all can't really shit on Philly. Y'all can't really shit on any of these awesome. teams. Yeah. Because, you know, making it to, getting a playoff berth isn't enough anymore. No. I mean, you can't even shit on Miami. I mean, I saw a lot of people, like, bring on Miami. Oh, Miami. I'm like, you know, y'all, y'all Miami. Miami is who um people think the Celtics are if you want to be real about it. <laughs> you know, like Miami should Miami is who like should have the arrogance of a Warriors, the arrogance yeah. of a Lakers, a arrogance of the Knicks, a arrogance of those franchises that actually have historic things. And I only say that because they've had two trips to the finals in the last five years. Yep. You know what I mean? Where you can stick your chest out and say, all right, we're making some moves on this thing and, and, and we actually have a stake in this conversation. You know what I mean? But like, no diss. Like I said, I'm enjoying it. And I think that if the Knicks make it, could get healthy in this in this playoff series and, and make a run, oh, I, I'm scared. I think, I'm going to think Jesus coming back, bro. Because like, <laughs> the, Knicks, the Knicks playing basketball during good weather, oh, the city is – Unmatched, no city's touching this. Shout out to Chicago. I love Chicago, by the way. But yeah, but even Chicago, it's a Bears town. <laughs> it's and that, that's why I was making the comparison. Like with the Knicks, like the first four touchdown Caleb Williams game next season is going to be you want to talk about hot takes. First of all, I'm gonna be wild. Let's, let's, let's be very clear. I'm gonna be wild. But then it's gonna it's gonna be like the same thing where you have like people are like I told somebody this, and somebody thought I was tweaking, but it's it's really serious. I said all. Oh, the Bears have to do. Caleb Williams have to do is win one Super Bowl with the Bears, and he'll yeah. probably be over Jordan. Like, and people, I know that sounds blasphemous to people, mm -hmm. but we just care about football more. Yeah, that not that we don't care about the Bulls, but the Bears won. I've been on the Bears beat for three years. They have won a combined fourteen games in my three years covering that team, and they're still front page news. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So it's kind of like I feel like the same vibe from the Knicks where. Mm -hmm. You'll have somebody. I had somebody tell me Jalen Brunson was better than SGA, and I'm like, look, I like Jalen. Let, let, let's let's not do too much here. <laughs> look, man, the, the the takes are very, they're a lot, they're a lot. Yeah. And like I said, I hate to be the thief of joy. Yeah, I want everybody to enjoy this. I'm enjoying it, but like, let's relax our limbs. We, yeah, we doing a lot here. You know what I mean? That's like if the Bulls got Kevin Durant randomly. Right, right now, and shit, you know, yeah. right now, like they're gonna be like, Oh my god, we're gonna be like, Yo, still, yeah, shit. chill out because <laughs> it don't mean no guaranteed ring, gonna win a little bit more games, we're gonna do all this other stuff, and cool. But you know, like I said, respect to the Knicks, I really want them to do well. But like, let's just come back down to earth, let's not disrespect Pat, let's get out the first round, let's yeah, get healthy, and then we can have a conversation. Definitely. Uh, let's talk about the, the NBA regular season, man. I, I've said on this show that, and maybe you can give me a better opinion on this, uh, 
I feel like this has been the hardest regular season for me to personally watch because, you know, I feel like the beginning of the season, I feel like the NCAA tournament was, was great. I didn't like the idea at first. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. But as I watched it, it was competitive. The games felt important. And I know people made fun of the banner thing, uh, especially because it was the Lakers. And, you know, Lakers need to be very specific with what they're putting up in there in their Raptors, but I felt it was fun. But I feel like the regular season is slowly starting to feel like it just doesn't matter anymore. And I do think the last couple of years playoffs have been very entertaining. So I'm expecting a good uh, playoffs. I'm expecting a good uh, play in, but it's got to the point where I even feel like the NBA is maybe ducking NFL smoke. We've talked about it here. They don't even schedule games on Thursday, doing Thursday night football. Now I understand they're not going to win the ratings battle regardless, but I always feel like you should have an option for people who don't care about the NFL, who want to watch that. What do you think about the NBA's regular season strategy? Do you think they should shift it? What can they do to make it more, feel like more important for the casual viewer? Well, I think the end season tournament is way too early. I think it should be swapped out for all-star weekend in February because that gives the momentum of teams coming like that really need those wins to go into, you know, that playoff race. Uh, I think the all-star weekend should be moved to the summer. I know obviously – um, the Olympics goes on from time to time. Um, but I think it would be good because everybody would be available. No real heavy risk. Everybody's still active. Everybody could travel at that particular time. And you don't have to worry about guys missing or this, that, and the third. I mean, and guys would be fresh to actually compete. They'll be hungry to play basketball because their season, especially the guys that potentially made. So it'll, it'll, it'll take, it'll piggyback off the, the uh, Pro Bowl, yeah. but actually play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I think I like what Gilbert Arena said, even though he has some crazy ass takes. Oh, yes, he does. I like the the entertainment part. Like basketball is entertainment. It's losing its competitiveness. I think guys still compete, but there's so much added to it. Now you got the gambling. You got, um, you know, guys being penalized for games being played. Like there's a different approach. Like Tyrese Halliburton's stinky because he's playing hurt. Like yeah. – there's he not you don't have to put a broad thing up there. He's been hurt. He rushed himself. Yeah, he's been hurt for a couple months now. He's been hurt, but his half yeah. cooked, but he's trying to reach these 65 games. Yeah. And I think that's a a, a conversation CJ McCullum and the player association are gonna have to rehuddle and say, all right, this is getting ridiculous, bro. Like, you nice or you not? You know what I mean? Like, we reward yeah. people that d- dominated for a good percentage and their peers agree. Yeah. Versus this whole, all right, bro, you know. You only kill for 45 games, so I ain't going to be enough. Yeah. You scored 40, 45 of them games. But not here, the other 20. Here, here, <laughs> you got it, bro. Yeah. I mean, let's just be realistic because our interest not there. I'm treating basketball now like baseball. I like baseball, but That's I don't want long ass season. games. Nowadays, I'm going to go to a Yankee game here and there because I'm a Yankee fan, right? But I go postseason. I don't tap in until postseason because I'm just spent. I'm not going to care about a back-to-back. I'm not going to yeah. care about that's – a, that's a whole other thing from a casual fan watching games, and they don't understand that guy on minute, minute restriction. You know what I mean? They flew in late, so they might not play. Back-to-backs, these certain things, certain guys, that's going to be an automatic win for the team hosting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like certain things. Like teams ain't caring no more to get a regular season win and yeah. keep us going no more. It's like yeah. – I'm just trying to make it to April, bro, because a freak accident can happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. so like it's availability is your biggest strength and a little bit of luck. Definitely. Go ahead, Speaking man. of availability, you know what I'm saying? We got Cat that's out mm-hmm. um, for the foreseeable future right now because yep. of like a torn meniscus and everything. So we got we got Ant-Man out here that's holding it down and making highlight reels for dunks that's not dunks. We'll talk about that a little later, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hard layups, as I call them. And then we got the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, when you look at the Timberwolves and you look at the uh, Thunder, these are not traditional winners and they're smaller markets. So no matter how good they are, people are going to not believe in them until they make the big jump. So considering where they are in the standings, do you think this team had both teams or any of the teams have what it takes to make an extended run in the playoffs? Absolutely not. Seven through 10 are licking their chops. Yes. I know yes. it's a bloodbath down there, but whoever come up with that seven and eight. Oh, see, that's why I posed the question. All the way that I posed teams, it. All them bottom teams right now are just worried about getting in. Yep. 
and everybody can have their jokes. It is harder at the, like, basically, it is more difficult at the bottom than the top. Because them top teams is going to get kicked out ASAP. They, they, they young, they cool, but they are not ready. The Lakers get the thunder. They don't be ready. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, I think they swept them in the regular season already. But they just they that's who they want. They yeah. that's what they want. Seeding don't really matter. Just get in. Yep. Phoenix get them. Come on, run it. Like Phoenix got bigger problems. They can't beat the Denver's. They can't beat uh I'm trying to think of another team that's really tough for them. I don't think they can beat the Clippers this year. They damn near shouldn't nah, beat them Clippers last year. Inconsistent. Clippers too inconsistent right now. They 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 got they dealing with that injury bug too. Like yeah, anything I don't trust them right now until they can prove that they bring in comfortable group of guys into the first round. I I was high on them early on, and they tricked me up out my position. And I, <laughs> I'm good, bro. I love those dudes, but no, until they can prove that they're healthy, no. But that yeah. one and two, love SGA, love Ant. They got to prove it. They're not cracking. Okay. It, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I was just going to say, too, like, even with, like, if you look at the Warriors, Warriors, same thing. And I think that's where the experience mm-hmm. factor comes in. I don't believe in OKC or Minnesota. I believe in Minnesota more than I believe in OKC just yeah. because – They got more vets. More vets defensively. They've been to the playoffs a couple times. I think if you're – I'm I, I don't. I hate everything about Phoenix's makeup. I just don't like how that team is constructed. Mm-hmm. But I think even if you're Phoenix, Dallas, uh, the Warriors and Lakers, you want that. The Thunder's a team you want to see, in mm-hmm. my personal opinion. So I want to – and this is, you know, you know to go to the Wolves, because I know, Bang, you're going to say that. I just wonder what you feel about the Warriors when it comes to one of those two top teams. Or, like, the Warriors' chances with it. We got you there. We lose – you hear me? I think he idle right now. Thank you. Hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. So Scott said. Scott said something. Okay. Great? So, how do you feel about the Warriors' chances specifically against one of those teams? Um, I, like you know, I mean, Draymond Dr- Dr- fool ass. I don't. I don't know what to expect with him, man, because you know he looked like he. Can was y'all hear like, me? Yeah, we can hear you. I can okay, hear you cool. now. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, <laughs> I was yeah. wondering what the hell happened. My fault. <laughs> it was for a minute, Jr. And then it was him. So um, I do believe in the Warriors. Um, I know, you know, I thought Draymond kind of got his act together, but like he kind of back on that BS. Um, so I mean, I think that's their biggest hurdle. But they still, I don't count them out. You know what I mean? I think the biggest move they ever made was putting Clay on the bench and Clay accepting that role and being able to like be. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? So in those type of things, you got to understand like. I trust them, but again, I'm not going to really mog out, you know what I mean, Minnesota like that and really, like, disrespect their body of work because they may shock us, but they got to prove it. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard because people, was, you know, when the season first started, they was like, ah, they got a couple wins. They ain't going to fall off. They kept it rolling. But, again, we're going we gonna to have to prove the doubters wrong one more time, and I'm a doubter, and I'm okay with being wrong. Go to my mentions. Tell me I don't know shit. Tell me I'm trash. Talk about my mama. I don't care. That's the beauty of this game. Because if we knew all the right takes, we would have Biff Almanac, and I would have a billion dollars. <laughs> hey, shouts out to that Back to the Future reference. Yeah, all right. right. It looks like the team that's the runaway favorite to win it all is the Boston Celtics. They 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 out here kicking everybody ass. Damn near anytime you see them, they winning by at least a dub. They're a deep team. But, you know, sometimes they coach is a tweak. Mm-hmm. And sometimes against some opponents, they don't necessarily they, – sometimes they can play to their competition. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, do you believe in the Boston Celtics and do you think they're the runaway favorite to win this championship? I don't believe. And I don't trust Jason Tatum. Me but, neither. But at the end of the day, I got to – it's tough because Jason Tatum's been winning for a long time at a very young age. And – it's hard to be like, ah, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't trust bro like that. You know what I mean? Like it sucks because we just ready for him to make that jump. He's been proclaimed the next, you know what I mean? Like I personally, and this is my hot take. I don't believe bro. Uh, Kobe had no predecessors, predator, uh, predecessors in this situation. Everybody that claimed, Oh mama mentality, blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, Y'all not locked in like Brian, bro. Nope. 
No, none of them dudes is like that, bro. It sounds they, good. It sounds good. It's like a Hallmark cool. card. No, it's like, yo, that's my favorite player. Michael Jordan was my favorite player. I don't play like Mike, bro. I don't have that mentality. Mike was greedy. He was <laughs> greedy, bro. Yeah. They not like Kobe, bro. And that's yeah. cool. That's okay. You coming in your, your own, basically. But at the end of the day, with the whole Kobe wristband, I mean, the armband. And and that was nasty as a Celtic. I'm sorry. That, that was nasty it, work. And it's just like. They they roll. They got it. They got the mat. They got the makeup of a team, bro. I respect them for that. Missoula got them buying in. They really roll. But at the end of the day, bro, until he prove it, um, I I can't buy in, bro. They just get weird around like the pressure games. They see a Philly. They see a Miami, and then they just fold. Yeah, I I'm with you. At the same time, if they do roll off one, I've said it on this show. If they roll off one, they might get three straight. Because they are a team that I, they're one of those teams like the Bulls in 91. It's like when Mike finally get a sniff of a championship, he ain't letting it go. And they got a decent, they have a young enough team of people like that. Not like Mike, but people like if you, if you give them a taste of a title, they're not going to be overly excited because they ain't even overly excited now. Mm -hmm. But that's also why I don't believe, and BC just said it, I, I, it, if Kobe was here, I don't think Kobe would take to be like, look at Jason Tatum and be like, hey, man, that's cool that you wearing my armband. No, not as a Celtic, he wouldn't. No, Hell Kobe's no. going to be like, yo, take that shit off, G. Like, Kobe's we don't want to mess with him. To be Kobe. fair, he wouldn't wear it. He wouldn't wear it if Kobe was still here. <laughs> that just felt so true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think guys would be trying to do the whole Kobe, Michael Jordan thing of bothering him, but I don't think Kobe really would be locked in just like, all right. He's going to be like, yo, I gave you all the tools. Now, what you going to do with it? Yeah. And if you ain't met that, then you not like me. Stop saying you like me. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Because I like booking them, but like, bro, it'd be some shit where it just do not turn over. Like, yeah. you know what I mean, like Kobe is shoot, he is shooting to like, all right, I'm gonna just will his team. And I think we've got blinded by analytics so much to a point. Like, again, I'm not trying to shit on analytics, by the way, but because there is a place for that in the game. But we've gotten yeah. to a point where a guy cares so much about efficiency. Than actually trying to will a team to a victory. That's why AI got the Sixers to uh to the finals. That's why a Kobe would have an 81 points. Bro, he refused to pass it to bum ass Liz. And then also, I think we also underestimate Kobe's hate for the Celtics. This is he also said that he was not gonna do the redeem team if KG and Paul Pierce was on that team. So <laughs> we gotta keep that in there too, man. But um, Trey, man, we know you got a role, man. I'm glad you could come on here and, and, and join us, man. Always good to talk with you, man. If y'all not in tune with Trey, y'all need to follow him at uh, you know, his at his at his Twitter at Trayvon. You can follow him on Instagram at Trayvon Edwards. Um, uh, man, is, is there anything you want to say before we get you up out of here, G? Nah, man, I appreciate the love, man. You know, we fam. When you reached out, I'm like, you know, I I, I jump on easy. Like, you know what I mean? I'm definitely not tripping. Always here, you know what I mean? Uh, can't wait to talk about the Bulls next year. That's it. Hopefully you know there's I mean? something they bring, give us bring, something to talk bring about. Bring me back during <laughs> summer league or, you know, the draft or something yeah. like that because I'm going to really be locked in and we're going to be able to do some stuff right there. But, uh, man, JR, I'm about to follow you, bro. Pleasure talking to you. Scott, yes, sir. Show man, my G, good to have you on, bro. Thanks, yes, sir. So, we're going to get into before we get in that, we're gonna bring uh Mike in. Mike, what's going on, bro? What's going on, brother? Yeah, move a little bit to there. We go, move a little bit to the screen. There we go. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's looking like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I got you. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> no, 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 we got man. you here, man. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting kind of old. I'm getting kind of old. Hey, you know, getting kind of old. We know we all get old, G. But uh, as we were getting into this, man, uh, you know, actually, we got Mikey here too. We, we, we got all the mics in here. Hey, <laughs> what's, going on, what's, what's going the on? word? What's going on? I, I, before we get into the shits. Is I want to defend myself again in this Caleb Williams expectations argument part two. Uh, uh, as Bang wanted to call me everything but a child of God in group chat the other day. Uh, I want to oh, talk about don't Bang. do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Your ass kick that shit off. I was working, y'all. Mikey, Mike, I was literally getting out of a meeting, and all of a sudden I look at my phone like, damn, what did I do? Like. <laughs> You said the same thing as me. Like, it's like, oh. Nah, look, look, so before we get into that, I want to say, Bane, why do you hate the Anthony Edwards dunk the other night? That's not a dunk. That's a hard layup. Like, a, a dunk is actually is hilarious. That's hilarious. I like that. Dunking the ball requires you to grab the win. I'm not saying the shit wasn't nice. 
The shit was amazing. But some, but I blame, you know, I blame, I blame Dwight Howard. Here's why I blame I Dwight saying, Howard. I, I, I didn't like the, I didn't like the Dwight, the, uh, in the uh, dunk contest when he threw Thank it. Thank you. That that's, I didn't like that's that. what I didn't that was. Yeah. Right. That's what that was. Not saying that he didn't try to yam on his ass because he did. It just wasn't a dunk. And you know why it wasn't a dunk? Because the nigga damn near fucked up his finger because he hit that, he hit the tip of that mm -hmm. bitch trying mm -hmm. to dunk. The, the dunk that happened to Austin Reeves, that's a dunk. The man put his nuts in his face and he grabbed the rim. He yanked that bitch. Like a dunk has to be like this, fam. Like you have to do this. You don't, you don't slap a titty, fam. That's what he did. He <laughs> a titty. That's the difference. But that, it's an it was nice. Like it was, it was cold. But when I looked at it the second time, I was like, wait a minute. Oh, this thing didn't even grab the rim, man. You gotta grab the rim, fam. That's all. But the White Howard. The White Howard won the dunking contest. By just basically a hard layup, and that's yeah. why we doing this shit. The the DeAndre Jordan mm -hmm. shit too. I think it was DeAndre Jordan. Or oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Blake Griffin. Yeah, it was Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin. Yeah, it was Blake Griffin when yeah, he yeah. Griffin, he just yeah. threw it in. He just threw he just it threw in. Threw it in, fam. Like no, it's this not the bozo no, the, show. DeAndre fam. Jordan actually dunked on, but yeah, buddy. yeah, he dunked on Shorty. Yeah, so I think it was nice. It just wasn't a dunk. It was a hard ass layup. Hard layups hilarious. I mean, look, I, most all hard layups, <laughs> I thought he at least put that motherfucker in from every angle I saw. Nigga. He doing it. Wasn't that, that, you wasn't know, that you know. Howard. He was right, right, there. right. It wasn't as it's like <laughs> it's like when you get home from work and you take off your work clothes and you just throw the shit in the hamper. Like that's what he did. He just threw it down <laughs> with a little with a little velo. Right. That's a little it. bit more arm. So That's we got like this. We got my brother here as we, we were trying to get on the same page um time wise. Uh what's going on? What's going on, man? Uh <laughs> sorry, my students are loud. Oh, you still at work? I am still in the building, yes. Oh, you still oh. in the building. We don't want a good principal. We won't miss the clerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but why I wanted to have y'all on here today because I wanted to rehash a debate we had on here on uh, the show on um, Monday. We were talking about Caleb Williams' expectations. Now, Bane, correct me if I'm wrong. Ah, uh, here you go. He about to, he about to attack me, y'all. I'm ready for it. I'm alone now, too. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, I brought nigga back got, up this time. This nigga got me cornered. <laughs> and now, correct me if I'm wrong. I said on the show that to me, Bears fans need to I need to have their expectations be based on what they want Caleb to be and not because they're upset that Justin Fields got traded. And I That's said fair. my numbers for him That's fair. was 3,500 yards, 28 fair. touchdowns, and no more than 15 interceptions. Courtney said that she needed to see the C.J. Stroud numbers, which was 4,000 yards, 23 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. I said 5,000 – I mean, if I said five interceptions and 4,000 yards is a little crazy. It's, it's, and so I said he's still a rookie. I said he's going to go through peaks and valleys. And Bang said you can't – both go all three of y'all. Bang, uh, Dante, and Courtney all said that I was uh, I, I was being hypocritical. Let me, let, me, let me rephrase it for you. Go ahead. I said to you, you are tempering expectations by using the R word. What I said is when you say that, when you say that, it's giving you're you're not trying to do it because I clearly heard what you were saying. What I was telling you is that you're not trying to do it, but you but when you say, remember, he's just a rookie, you're using it as a caveat, not but but we all have to realize that the expectations have to be higher with who you have on your team with you. If this was a situation where he was throwing to what Bryce Young was throwing to, then I would totally understand. But I can't give him the rookie. I can't give him the rookie line based off of he's coming into a situation that is unlike anything that a rookie has ever came into in the NFL. So if we're talking about the talent that this is not you know, the Jalen, the Jason Fields group that's like, yo, he better do it. I'm saying that if he's what you believe he is, if he is what the press says he is, if he is what the tape says he is, combined with coming in 
to a situation with two number ones, a top 10 possible tight end, a running back who's just come off his best season, and an improving offensive line, your expectations has to be better because he's coming into a situation unlike anything anyone has ever seen for a rookie quarterback. So I'm not going to give him the rookie coin only because of that. If this ad, if he was coming in like the Carolina, then it's like, oh, yeah, he a rookie. He going to go through his growing pains. But he also has enough vets, top flight vets, on the team to where if he hits a rookie wall, he has people to right. there to support him. And they not tough-ass people. Like, he's not coming into the situation where – like, like Steve Walsh is your backup quarterback, and that's the only vet that you got on the team. So they're expecting you to be – no, he's coming into a situation where he's almost, in a sense, like Brock Purdy, but a better version of it. Because look at the talent that Brock Purdy has around him. He has a whole load of talent. Guess who else now has that? As a rookie, the number one pick in the draft, Caleb Williams. So I do – what I said to you, because – for y'all to understand, he we agreed on the amount, but that to me is the base. And he tried to yell at me and come down on me <laughs> and shit. But I do expect the CJ Stroud numbers because of who he comes in with. He's not coming in with no huff ass players, y'all. Okay, yeah. that's fair. See, w w w this is what happens when I when you, you explained it more because at the time y'all was just yelling at me on Friday. It, it was, that's what it, I was trying to he, say. He yelling at me. <laughs> Y'all was, <laughs> was yelling at me. He had, he had was in the, was, Scott, that's what the I, comments like Scott getting jumped. Scott, that's what I was trying to say, but you kept telling me, you know, that I was like, yo, you 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 thinking about Justin Fields. No, fuck that nigga. That nigga is a stealer now. <laughs> we moved, hey, we moved. Scott, what we say? We moved, we bro. Moved. We moved, I'm bro. Moved, bro. I only moved. wrote to, to Mike. Oh, I forgot. I forgot uh, flows at work. My bad. Yeah, he, this nigga got his headphones on. He, 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 I'm just saying, still, still. <laughs> no, you know, don't. I gotta be respectable. You know? He no, said, he "No, does. I don't. No, I do not." <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> so I want to go to 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 Mikey uh, first because you weren't here on for the main show on 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 uh, Monday. What what are your expectations for for Caleb uh, in in this rookie season? My realistic expectations were set at about 3,900, 3,975 yards. Um, 28 mm -hmm. total touchdowns. I mean, we can get that in passing. We can get that in running. I think if he's giving you 28 in passing, you have to probably think he's probably going to give you another three more rushing. So I'll just go with 3,900 yards, 28 touchdowns, and I said 12 interceptions. Now, to me, like I said last week in the, in the local hour, I think, you know, you have to give him grace because he is a rookie. And we also – us as Chicago Bears fans, we do not know what to expect from Shane Waldron's offense in this iteration in Chicago. You know, we have yet to see it. It's not like we know an exact like, OK, we're removing Justin and we're dropping in Caleb into Luke Getty's system. So this should not work. You know, everything is going to be a work in progress. Um, still, with that being said, um, I think, you know, we, we went over this before. No quarterback taken in the top five has ever come into his rookie season with two 1,200 receiving yard wide receivers. So he is set up, you know, for success. And I think, you know, we also have to remember that the Shane Waldron offense is um, really predicated on 12-man personnel, and they are going to run the shit out of the ball. Um, you know, they're going to go ahead and use all three running backs. So his numbers might be a little down, but that's not really expecting a lot in today's, in today's game, you know. 3,500 3, yards in today's game is about standard for the top 16 quarterbacks. So if he's a top 16, top 17 quarterback, then that's where he should be regardless. So um, I'm not going to go as far as Courtney. She was fucking tweaking, you know, <laughs> right? You got to realize with C.J. Stroud, no, no, there's only three quarterbacks that have ever come in and led the league in – uh in passing it was uh in touch in in interceptions and like the leading for the, the least amount of interception and passing yeah. and it was like joe montana um 
somebody else fucking godly and CJ Stroud. Like what we saw last year was ridiculous. So to put that on him, it's just not going to work like that. But I still believe 3,900 yards in this, in today's climate. And that's expecting it. You know, that's if he plays, you know, uh, uh, you know, about 18 games, you know, 17 games, the full allotment. I mean, but I don't think we're going to be seeing a lot of 198 passing yard games from him. So his numbers are going to increase. Hey, we- his numbers are going to increase. You know, you just look at just just in comparing what we saw from Justin last year. He was almost about 2,500 yards in only 13 games. And he had a lot of sub 200 passing yard games. <clears throat> so if he's just throwing out 220, you know, he's going to escalate. He's going to probably break a lot of our passing records in year one just because of, you know, like Bang said, his, his skill set and his traits. But also, that's just where the game is. So as long as he stays healthy and with these weapons, um, I, you know, he's going to be able to put up numbers. Hey, Mike, before you go, for G- mm-hmm. Scott, before you say it, I'm pulling up Geno Smith stats. 2022. Stat- damn near 70% completions. Pl- completions uh, percentage. 4,282 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Amazing. Last year, last year, missed a couple of games too. 3,629. Mikey, what you just said, I think, is the big picture here. Even though you don't agree, the big picture here is fam, we are used to seeing Nothing. 175 passing yards. That's what we're used to. Yeah. That and 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 that's cool. But he rolls off. 225, 250 games, a couple of 300 games here, that 4,000 yards is the possibility. Like, he, it is the possibility. And again, I, I'm also not basing this off of just what I think blindly. I'm also basing this because I feel like, I feel like that I'd be the only one that actually look at the teams we going to play. Go look wanna, at the teams we going to play. He can wanna, get that. Exactly. So, so, oh, go ahead, Scott. No, I'll, well, go ahead, go ahead. So, this, this is a few things. When uh, we was talking about, you know, the expectation of when I asked him on Twitter, and I was like 3,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, keep it under, you know what I'm saying, 15 picks. But as the days go on, I'm watching stuff, and I'm thinking something, I'm telling y'all, this might be a tape. I know the C.J. Stroud shit was amazing. It, what was amazing with the C.J. Stroud was the five interceptions. That's, yeah, with the picks. That's, yeah, that, yeah. that's just That's, that's, just that's wild. crazy. Real shit, bro. He's about to have one of the best rookie seasons ever. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Poles, Iberflus, everyone in that organization wants to look like a genius and wants to make it look like they made the right decision. What they're going to do is they're going to make him look amazing. These weapons that they're getting for him, they're going to get better. The system is going to be easier. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just look, I'm like, the only thing that can stop him from having 4,000 yards in it, is this he just turning the ball over and he's just not an accurate quarterback? He doesn't turn the ball over. He had five interceptions last year, right? Yeah. Three of them came against Notre Dame. Yeah. He had a bad game. You take that game away, he has he got two, two interceptions. Picks. He never he played three seasons, right? He never had and that's with having picks. to play from behind a lot because he had he the worst had defense more, in college exactly. football. He would, that's what everyone say. They said, man, the only thing they worry about is him taking a risk. Well, the risk is going good because he only threw five picks. He, My brother looks like it. he wants to bring us down to reality real quick. Yo, yo, yeah, ahead. yeah, you niggas definitely need to be taken down to reality. <laughs> what You're are you work. talking about? You're at work. You're at work. First of all, <laughs> I will say it's not he out the realm of possibility oh, oh, for oh, him oh, to throw. Close. He, could, he could get 4,000 yards. That's 235 yards a game. The man, only look, that, bingo. That, there have only been five rookie quarterbacks in NFL history to ever throw for 4,000 yards or more. And it's they like, never hey, had the talent that he got around them. That's Absolutely. true. But some of them have had worse talent and still did it. So just why because we're seeing be, talent is not six? a guarantee. It's just not a guarantee. Oh, we didn't say it's a guarantee. We, we it's, it's guarantee. Not, I don't think it's a wise prediction. Just because NFL quarterbacking is like flipping a coin. There's really no tell on how well it can be. Now, to your point... The person who did throw the most yards as a rookie was Andrew Luck. And I think Andrew right. Luck, yeah, Andrew Luck, he threw 4,300 yards, which he did have the second. And he had 18 picks. 
He, did he throw 18 picks? He threw 18 he, picks. Yeah, he, he, he was out. Yeah, he was out here throwing picks. But he wasn't afraid to throw. He did have probably the second greatest talent for a rookie quarterback ever. So I will give you that. Caleb has a much better opportunity than the four quarterbacks who threw for 4,000 yards. Cam, Cam threw for 4,100 and ran for almost 800. Yeah, Cam threw for 4,051. You got Andrew Luck, Justin Herbert. And he ran Augustine for 800. Chupé Stroud and then Jameis Winston. Real quick, but real quick, before you go, was 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 that Steve Smith, was Steve Smith and Greg Olson on that on that team? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They went, they went 6 and 10, though. So I just yeah. wanted to make sure. Then, of course, there's like Jameis Winston and uh, Justin Herbert, who I – well, Justin Herbert had what you call it um, – the dudes on the Bears now, obviously. Let me flows flows to your to your point right here. Let me ask you this: Do you consider last year, although he had already been in Green Bay system for a few years and learning, do you consider that Jordan Love's rookie year as being the full on starter? No, no, no. Okay, <laughs> no, yeah, I I get it, but like in looking at a full sample size of him, because we all saw the start he had, he was rough, and then he took off. And he still ended up with 4,100 yards, 32 touchdowns, and 11 picks. Now, fucking LaFleur is a genius up there. And that right. guy knows I was about to, about to say, offense. can Waldron scheme like LaFleur? LaFleur Correct. gets Correct. wide receivers open better than anybody in football right now. Right. I, you know, I, I would say, you know, when it comes to Caleb, I think 38 is reasonable. I think 28 touchdowns total total is not bad because I can I mean he's definitely athletic. He can get mm-hmm. himself about five touchdowns, whether it's just a rush. I mean a rush from the goal line, or whether he sneaks out and gets himself like, you know, maybe a 10, 15 yard run. That's very possible. 3,800 is probably where I leave it just because there are going to be like 180 yard passing games just because he's a rookie and it's just different. Mm-hmm. That being said, Justin Fields was never. I don't think even if at his peak. He would ever be a four thousand yard passer? He didn't get four thousand yards in college. His highest is like thirty two hundred yards, but he also rushed for like six hundred. That's just who he is. Caleb does have a better chance, but I still have no clue whether he will adapt to that NFL speed, to the fact that the linemen can run as fast as your receivers did in college. That's just a big thing. In addition to that, it's the Bears tax that fans have to deal with, which is the Bears won't know how to develop QBs until they develop QBs. And if right now, I'm just cautious. Now, if he does come in here, I will say, you know, maybe it's been just the fact that you needed a good quarterback all along. But as of right now, I'm just very, very cautious. I'm just. I'm going to tell you why I'm not cautious. Reason why I'm not cautious, because we've never been in a situation where we was drafting the number one pick in the draft. We've never been in a situation where we was drafting one or two of the best talents in the NFL. We've never been in this position. So, so I understand the, I understand the caution. Don't get me wrong. I understand what you said, the Bears tax. You are 100% right. But at a certain at a certain point, we got to throw that out the window. We've we've in our lifetime, we have never drafted number 1. So the expectation when you draft number 1 is that you're drafting the best player in the draft. Now, clearly, that's Murder Marv Harrison Jr. But number 2 on every other board is Caleb Williams. I, I can see the first two or three games that he we get the 200-yard game. But when he gets it, oh, we're getting at least two 400-yard, 350, 400-yard games. We're getting at least two of those. Go Again, go look at the teams he's playing when he gets it. And he, he I can see the New England, matter of fact, the New England Patriots game at home, depending on when that game is, I can already mark a 350 on that one right there. The Jacksonville Jaguars, whose defense was giving up a lot of shit from the middle and the end of the season. We I can the see commanders three, again. We play the, the commanders, commanders again too. I can yeah. see a 350 yard game. He's not going to. It's we. And, we're and, used, and, and Mike, that's the homecoming game because that's in DC again. Right. <laughs> He I, gonna want to show out in front of the crib. I was gonna ask a question. Why? Why are we playing Washington three years Bro, in a row? I have no idea. Oh, I have exactly. no why idea. Are we playing three in years in Washington row? too. I have no problem going to DC two years in a row. But I just want to know why it was scheduled like that. <laughs> but yeah. I got a question for y'all. And this is something I had to look. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute. To answer that question, to answer that question, because I got it up. The Bears play um to play the, a- the NFC West and the AFC South, and they said that they're also facing three opponents that finish in the same place. In the standings in the NFC South and the, the NFC South, AFC East and the NFC um in the NFC East. So we're playing them because they was last place again. 
Oh, I know. So I always wonder how they how they pick the random teams. So I, is that something new? I no, that's that's, you, that's you, how you they that's a, how you they pick a division going. from the NFC. You pick a division from the um, AFC, and then it's like four other loose games. But yeah, they they wrote they wrote they they rotate, they wrote. and then depending on the place you are. Like it's like three games that you will play against opponents that finish just like gotcha. you. So that's, that's why. Okay. Well, I got a, I got questions. I'm going to chime in before you have your question, Bang. I think the concept of you know we got to get rid of that Bears mentality of fear and all that is very very valid. However, I'm 33 <laughs> years old. I'm not going. I'm not going to be delusional either way. Which is the Bears will never be good. The Bears always have hope. I'm somewhere in the middle. And as of right now, Caleb, if he threw for four thousand, I'm not shocked. If he threw for 30 touchdowns, I honestly would not be shocked because the Bears have never had a QB prospect this good. They actually also never had a QB prospect as good as Justin. So all it takes for me more than the players is the, are the, is the system that they're in. And I'm not afraid, but I'm still skeptical until I'm not. And oh, man, I ain't mad at that. You, I, I, I'm not mad at that. I expect all of y'all to be that way. Yeah, I, I ain't mad that. at that. I, I ain't being cautious. He finna I'm not the way. I'm not. Finna, like, listen, we move. We move, bro. He finna spin that bitch. They can't look stupid. I'm finna set this nigga up to make this nigga look. Even if he average, they finna make him look amazing. Look, they better. They hey, Mike. Better. Mikey, I'm gonna tell. You, I'm gonna tell you why I'm not cautious. Because the teams that they play, yeah, not right, in the bro. division, they barely. They they barely even improved. Like Seattle probably didn't. They they got a new coach. They didn't really improve in this offseason. The draft ain't gonna do it. Jacksonville, uh, they lost players. Tennessee, hell no. Carolina, come on, man. New England, come on, Jack. San Francisco, we getting our ass kicked. Arizona, <laughs> ah, the Texans, oh, that's gonna be a good ass game, but we're probably gonna lose that. In Houston, the Colts game. I don't know nothing about Anthony Richardson right now, so they I don't lost, know. They lost. They went. They lost Gardner Spence. You, yeah, he was and, that bitch too. And then the Commanders. Oh, I'm. I'm not predicting games. I'm not saying that we're gonna win those games. That's not the prediction. What I'm saying is, is the teams that we play, we have not seen them really improve outside of the damn Houston Texans. Which to me, I said they having the best. They having the best offseason so far. So I'm I'm basing this off of the teams they play, and not out of blind hope. And if you look at the teams they play, I don't care who would have been that quarterback. We straight this year. Exactly. If you can't get ten with this, we're cursed. Oh, right. I'm going to say I'm, I'm definitely expecting wins. wins. I'm if expecting a ten number ten wins, wins, <laughs> and I'm expecting a thumping of Washington. Man, that's what I said. I'm not super delusional, but I'm also not afraid. They better beat Washington by three touchdowns. Man. We we got a uh, Dante here. Dante is 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 via. Where, where you at? Where you at, bro? You in San Fran? Yeah, I'm in San Francisco. You in San Francisco, do doing this thing. But uh, Dante, we're basically uh, just recapping the the debate we had on here on Monday about Caleb expectations. And I think we've all come to an agreement. I, I still want to know. Well, basically, what we were saying, and from from Monday, you still saying that you need to see what, like, extremely off the top, you know, generational results out the gate. I need to see exceptional play from someone who y'all told me was an exceptional quarterback for the past three goddamn years. I feel like that's not fair enough. Uh, that's not a difficult request for me to ask that. You know what I'm saying? I know he's going to have his rookie struggles here and there, but overall, I expect him to be extremely, extremely good. Like, I, I know I don't. I'm not going to lie to you. I just want to ask this one question to, to Joe and then Mike, and then we're going to bring our next guest in. I know, Joe, you still got to work. But so here's a question. I was going to, this is just for Joe and Mike. <laughs> this is just for Joe and Mike because uh, Mikey and, and Bang and Dante were talking about the local album. Joe, you were talking about like with Bears fans. Now, Caleb already has the superstar element. I'm not saying he's a superstar yet, but the superstar element. We've even had, you know, comments from Jalen's uh, with that Hollywood stuff not going to fly in the locker room. Now, me personally, I don't get where they get the Hollywood and per thing from him. He mm -hmm. personally never came off that way to me. Now, the hype around him, for sure. Now, my question for you, Joe, obviously, as a Bears fan, with us being on the Bears beat, do you think it's a three-way thing to me? Is Caleb ready for Chicago media and, and the Bears fans? Is Are the Bears organization ready for the superstar element that comes with Caleb? And are Bears fans ready for that? And Because as you said, Ben, a couple days ago, we like Justin. He's more cool. He come out, Caleb come out like he, he's the he, he's buddy ass, but like he comes with a lot of hype with him in Chicago niggas. You know, we don't like that off the rip. Joe, what do you think about like 
that three thing right there, do you think that everybody's ready for what we, we have coming? No, absolutely not. I mean, because Justin was a star due to media attention and the fact that Bears are quarterback starved, but also his mentality. I always say, like, he fit in well with the Midwest. He had the Midwest attitude of just put your head down, do your job. Caleb is not from that cloth, but I'm not saying he's like a freaking diva or something. Uh, but I don't think Chicago is ready for the mindset that he probably brings, which will be a lot of attention. It might be flashy. I don't think it's flamboyant, but I hope it doesn't jar with a lot of the uh, good old Midwestern boy uh, style that Chicago has. Like, oh, he's just a diva. Oh, he's not going to put his head down, do the work. Because at the end of the day, Chicago fans will find something to be upset with. Um, mm -hmm. No, no. There's, I have no belief or faith that Bears fans are ready for that. Because when is the last time they've had someone who not only was a superstar in ability, but superstar also within the media, within the persona? They called him at one point the greatest QB prospect ever. That alone is going to bring you uh, attention. And then they always hyper-focused on what he did. Like, oh, you know, he painted his fingernails, which who gives a shit about? But those things and having him being – having his life hyper-focused is something that I don't think Bears fans are going to be ready for. And I'm pretty sure if he has one bad game, they're going to slander him for that and then use that as a way uh, – uh, like an ad hominem attack and attack his character rather than attack his play on the field, which is fine to criticize him if he does bad. But unfortunately, they're going to use it against him. And that's just – that is what it is. And on top of that, I hope Caleb also realizes this is a QB star of city. It's not like you're going into San Fran where you kind of – Deal with that? You deal with the egos of San Fran because it's freaking San Francisco. This is Chicago. Even though it's a big city, it's it might as well be a, a freaking field of corn, like a small little western town. Because as big as it is, it's a, it's very very small. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I, before I we agree hold on, you. hold on real quick, Mike. Hold on real, real quick. Uh, Joe, uh, let them know they can follow you, man. I know you got we got you got to bounce. We gonna get you out of here. Flows Andalini on Twitter, on pretty much every social media. All righty then. That's Flo Zandalini, one half seven nine the co CEO of the Bob Shed Network. Um, we gonna bring in the homie, my homie man, my homie Tosa man. This is this is my guy right here. Uh, hold on, there we go. Um, I don't know why uh, Dante, you need to be there. We go. All right, we, we get right. Here. So we got everybody right here. Uh, so this is my guy, man. I'm, I'm gonna give y'all uh, give give you a, give you a proper intro. Uh, <laughs> this is my guy Tosa man. If y'all not in tune with this dude, you want to get all the you know the best soccer content uh and, and everything like that this is the guy that you need to get in tune with man this is my homie man we had a we, we've been on uh, twitter homies for a minute we finally linked up in new york in, in december uh we have had a good time out there man and, and, as mike knows sometimes when i get drunk i fall asleep in the spot and, and uh we peed we this spot. Nick, nigga almost got knocked out of in that bitch. We had a good time, man. Wanted to bring you on to talk some football and everything, man. But how you feeling, bro? I'm good. I cannot complain. Um, I'm alive, so I'm good. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it, though. Appreciate it. Oh, definitely, man. We're gonna get into your uh, AFC North teams in a minute, but before we get to you, Mike, give me your opinion on what I just asked my brother about Chicago being ready for Caleb. So I agree with Flo for 100 percent Like we're not ready for it because we never had somebody as big as that since we're like Michael Jordan, Derrick Rose, something like that. But they are going to attack him. Even in training camp, everything he does is going to be criticized. Oh, you know, people sure. love people love negativity. The first interception he does, they're going to criticize. The first the first time he can't break a tackle like Justin Fields, and going to be like, oh, Justin would have got out of there and shit like that. It's going to take – they're not going to really, like, by all that until he start winning. Especially and once he wins a Super Bowl, if he wins the Super Bowl, he could do whatever the fuck he wants. I guarantee it. If he wins and he beats Green Bay and he paints fucking fuck Green Bay on his nails, <laughs> people are going to paint their nails. Not me. People are going to do it. <laughs> not not there's anything not, wrong with that. Not, not, not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, hey, whatever floats your boat. But I'm not doing it. But people are going to do it. You know, like. I don't like you said. I don't know where the, the diva and all that other stuff came from. You know, everybody can make stuff up. All the father say he wants ownership. And I don't know if that's happened or not. I'm going off what that young man is doing. He went to his pro day. He looked definitely in shape, throwing the ball. I didn't know he was that strong as I saw him. Like, man, that that guy looks, you know, said pretty much strong. He handled business. Like all I, I really like Jalen Johnson saying that. Like you don't know that man. And I, I'm yeah. a person like, listen, if you don't know that man, don't speak on that man. You I'll, I'll, say, shoot, hey, I'll shoot. I'll shoot. I'll shoot. some bad, some bell though. Jalen did say we do have to get to know him. So, right. but but, he, that, but then you you're contradicting yourself. Don't state it. Oh man, right. don't come in there with that Hollywood shit. 
You don't know that man. You what, what do you mean? You're just going off of what you hear. I understand you got paid no cut. Nigga, what you just said was Hollywood. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you don't know that man. So let him come in and let him present himself and let him be the man that he want to be and the teammate he want to be. Because I guarantee you this, if he go in there and he lighten motherfucking Jalen Johnson ass up, pause, with, on the route from DJ Moore, they're going to be like, he going to he gonna gain his respect right then and there. They're going to like take a couple of acres off that contract. Um, yeah, my we'll, he gonna, he's going to attack that man. Watch. We'll talk he's about this speak. more in... We'll talk about this more in depth in the, in the local hour with Bang, Mikey, and, and Dante. But Tosin, I want to get your opinion from the outside perspective. Of course, we live in our little Chicago uh, sports bubble over here. What's your opinion on Caleb Williams, uh, this whole draft process, and how you think he fits uh, with the Bears? I mean, look, I'm just glad you guys got him some help. That's the first and most important thing because Justin was out there fighting for his life uh, yeah. for a minute. So I'm glad he's got, like, actual receivers going in. Um, he's from DC. So, you know, I know how them DC dudes are. They're a little bit different in the head. So, um, he's going to be fine. I think like, you know, all the hype's on him, obviously just is what it is, but I think he'll live up to it. I think the kid is, he's good. He's a good player. We've all seen what he could do at SC. So it's just really just down to just him just getting his shit together when he gets to Chicago. Cause we all know that's where he's going. So, yeah. you know, I think the kid is good. I think he's good. And the a NFC North is just, that's a fucking bloodbath right now. I don't know. God bless to everybody in that conference because y'all got a lot of shit going on over there. But I think the kid's going to be good. The it went from good. laughable to probably the best division in football very, very, very quickly. And I, I'm still not ready to and say until, that the Vikings until, are out of it yet. The Vikings draft J.J. McCarthy. They, but they, they might. They I'm hearing it might be Drake May. I know I know. Mike don't fuck with Drake May. <laughs> Same <actually>. difference. <laughs> <laughs> same, same, thing. Same, same thing, same thing. What? The ball, but hey, they praise that man. I didn't want to get into the race shit. But bro, we only do it when it's a black quarterback. Motherfucker told that they told us that Blaine Gabbert had a chance to be the number one pick over Cam Newton. Blaine fucking Gabbert. Hey, Mike, <laughs> Mike, I'm going to tell you something crazy that happened to me on Twitter a few years ago. So this is when Lamar wasn't doing too hot. And somebody was just like, yo, we should, uh, what's it called? We should like get rid of Lamar and bring in JJ McCarthy. I was like, yo, man, what? Never unfollow somebody so fast in my life. Just <laughs> like, it's not, I'm not, he, should, he should be a wide receiver. We do this to all those quarterbacks. Hey, all man, those. look. But you let Christian Ponder, Jake Locker, <laughs> hack your butt. Like, come on, man. Come hey, man. On, I'm going to keep saying it. Ponder, bro. I'm going to keep Brandon, saying it. Listen, Brandon Whedon. <laughs> he was he was 32 years old as, boy, a, as a fucking rookie. Well, that's the hardest the, the deck been stacked on this show. <laughs> like, yeah, Brandon, Whedon. Brandon fucking Whedon. Hey, man, Brandon look. J.J. McCarthy is going, I keep saying it, J.J. McCarthy, by the time he's 30, is going to be the head coach at <laughs> Nazareth High School in LaGrange Park, Illinois. On, that's one. On. And Drake May is going to be Matt Ryan. He's gonna have like that one or two year, that one or two good years. He's gonna be steady, and folks just gonna try to want to put him in the Hall of Fame for some reason. Okay, nigga, so Matt, Matt, Matt Ryan nigga, was the MVP. No, no that nigga. I know. That's what I say. He gonna have that. He's that's what I say. Matt Schwab, G. Matt Schwab. He's spun it for a few years. He gonna be Matt Schwab. That's what I ain't mean. mad at that. His floor, his ceiling is Matt Ryan. His floor is Matt Schwab. Y'all look at Matt Schaub in the face too, like <laughs> damn. I, let's, like, let's, I want I want to pivot, man. I want to talk about the the AFC North now. Uh, Tosin, you're a big uh, Baltimore Ravens fan, and I was saying like as soon as the Patrick Queen uh, thing happened, you hit me like, man, like, man, man he's, he's, a, he's bitch. a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, Tell me, me just how just you how feel, you feel about, about you know him you know, going, going over there into the landscape of the division. Honestly, Honestly it's, 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 it was funny. It was funny. funny. Um, because, um, because it's just like, like, one second. But yeah, it was it was funny because it was just like, yo, we obviously traded for Roquan, which thanks the Bears for that. I appreciate y'all so much for that shit because <laughs> Roquan changed all of our lives. You know what I mean? It was just like that nigga changed a broke nigga's life. That's literally what Roquan <laughs> did for us. Completely changed our lives. But I mean, PQ was solid when, um, you know, before we got Roquan, but then he changed the different level. So, I think him going to Steelers, he just kind of wants to prove something that doesn't need to be proved. But I guess, man. And Geno Stone's over there now with the Bengals and then uh, other quarterbacks now at the Browns. So 
whatever. And also it's that the Steelers too, um, Deshaun Elliott. So it's like a whole bunch of old Ravens going around the division. So, but PQ wants to be the villain. So I'm like, hey, listen, we gonna see, you gonna see, we gonna see that tough talk in, uh, in the fall. So I have nothing else to say about that. Yeah, that tough even... with the number six. I tell you that, unless you're a goon, get your real number. Where your fifty something at? Unless you're a goon, like get you get your number fifty, bro. Like, hey, my nigga, bring, 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 bring real numbers back. back. Yeah, bring real numbers back, back bro. Yeah, and man, neck rolls. We and neck rolls. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we need to bring our linebackers <laughs> back with neck rolls. We need that. About? We're coming up to middle yeah, nigga number six. I heard, you need the I heard. single bar. You need the single bar face mask. Shout, shouts out to my DNA cousin, um, Brian Cox. He was one of the last linebackers with the neck roll joints. <laughs> Put fear in well, people's eyes. They even said, I heard, uh, you know, when he was, obviously when he was with the Steel, with the Ravens, that one time, I guess he was talking shit to Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin told his ass, you ain't even a real Raven yet. Like, you ain't even been here long enough. Look, to be talking shit to me. <laughs> Mike Thomas, first of all, looks like Mike. Uh, he looks like Omar Epps, first of all. Sec- second of all, this nigga's ass. Omar oh Epps. He, uh, even when he stuck his leg out against Jacoby Jones, he's just <laughs> always been, that's just how he's always been. He's just an asshole, and I respect him for it. He's like one of the few coaches that, like, I, I have nothing bad to say about him. Just is what it is. But, I mean, he talks shit to Patrick about that, and I'm shocked that he signed with the Steelers. But I guess he wants, I was thought he, I honestly thought he was going to the Seahawks. I'm actually really shocked he didn't go to Seattle. So, Hey, but I'm yeah, listening. even there's something when you have division rivals go to a different team. And I understand like a lot of people got on uh, a lot of people got on Tiki. That's because niggas just don't like Tiki. Like Tiki is buddy ass. Like you know when, when we look at people like like you shouldn't even be talking, my G. But like I understand why Eagles fans are upset with um with uh you know with him going to I mean the Giants fans being upset with him going to the, the Eagles because. Juice Peppers died to me when he went to the Green Bay Packers. Like it's just, it's just, it's just what well, is what it is. So I definitely get that. But what do you think about um? You know, you guys just signed King Henry. Y'all got Derrick Henry over there. I think like the biggest issue why y'all lost the AFC Championship game because you didn't run the football a lot. I feel like it, Lamar was trying to prove to people, probably niggas like me, that he can actually win the game throwing the football consistently. Uh, how do, what do you think that adds to you know the team now? I mean, you got a six foot three and a half goddamn giant next to Lamar. I mean, you pick your poison. So it's like, either way, you fuck. It's like, you got to stop Lamar, you got to start Derrick Henry, or you got to stop Zay Flowers. So either way, you got to pick your poison. So that's really, I love the fact we got Derrick Henry. I wish we would have got him during the trade deadline like we were supposed to. But listen, the cool thing I want to see now is Pat Ricard trying to block for him. Like, you try and block a big old white boy who's like 6'3", 300 pounds, and then you got Derrick Henry. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. Um, but we do – I think the most important thing we need to fix is our offensive line. We don't have anybody on there. So, you know, it's nice we got Derrick Henry, but we saw what he did with the Titans, and their, their offensive line was trash last year. So it's like what can we do now with a new line? That's really what I'm more intrigued to see. It's like I'm glad we got Derrick Henry. That's a good piece, but how can we now build around him and Lamar? Who do you think is the biggest threat to the AFC North crown? I mean, we're going to have a healthy Joe Burrow uh, back this year. Uh, don't know if T. Higgins will be there. That, that, that's one thing we don't know yet. Uh, of course, the Steelers just got, you know, Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, uh, with that whole situation. Who do you think would be the biggest threat to, you know, the Ravens trying to repeat? But well, isn't the team with the all allegations quarterback room, which is the Browns? Uh, I almost forgot about them. Yeah, no, the nasty man. They got <laughs> the all allegations room. They got two <laughs> nasty quarterbacks who are just all <laughs> allegations. You got crab legs and nasty man over there. So. <laughs> well, it's probably gonna be the Bengals, man. Um, they just are who they are. I mean, I don't. Again, like I, I have choice words for the way people talk about um about Joe Burrow and Lamar. I mean, I think that Joe's very good, but. Anytime Lamar's healthy and Joe is too, we know who comes out on top every time, and it's Lamar. So I definitely think it's going to be the um, the Bengals and the Ravens going to definitely be fighting for the number one. But the Steelers, again, like I don't know how they're going to look. I mean, they got some real sneaky pieces in there, like um, getting Justin and Russell. I don't know what Russell looks like right now. Um, he looks washed, but we'll see how that turns out. And they also got Van Jefferson. I don't know how much threat he's got on his tires, but they've made some moves over there in Pittsburgh. So. You can never count them out. Mike Tomlin is Mike Tomlin. He is great for, you know, he's never had a losing season, so we can never count them out. 
Definitely, definitely for sure, man. Uh, let's go to our next topic. I want to talk about, you know, when we were just talking about, we were just talking, about, uh, you know, JJ McCarthy and um and Drake May. So as we're heading to the draft, I think we're slowly starting to get away from the conversation of who's going to go number one. I think that has been answered by not just the Bears and their movement, but also Caleb Williams, damn near toe NFL Network. That was going to be the case. Uh, so I think the next question is who is going to move up to the top four. We're hearing that uh, the Arizona Cardinals are up for business. We're hearing rumors that the Patriots might want to trade down. And then we're hearing, you know, we saw the trade that the Minnesota Vikings made last week that they're going to feel like they're going to try to get up into that top four to get a quarterback. And then you got the New York Giants who pretty much all have said they're done with Daniel Jones. Uh, I want to go to you, Mikey, first. Who do you think? is going to make that leap to go out there and, and, and get a quarterback outside of, obviously, I feel like the first two picks will be Caleb, and I do think that the Reds, not the Reds, but the Commanders will go uh, Jaden Daniels. Mikey, who do you think is going to be uh, taking Drake Mayer or J.J. McCarthy? Uh, it's going to be the Vikings. I mean, um, Albert Breer came out and reported that the Vikings and the Texans already had a handshake agreement deal um, for the Vikings to go ahead and pick up that extra first-round pick. Um, as long as Kirk Cousins signed with the Falcons. If Kirk Cousins um, was going to return back to the Vikings, then that deal would have never took place. As soon as Kirk Cousins signed with the Vikings, then they went ahead and they finalized that, that trade. So that was already in the works. They know what they need to do. Um, they were sniffing around the year that the Bears took Justin Fields. They were kind of already prepping for the Kirk Cousins departure and trying to get the next quarterback for the, you know, for the franchise. So it's going to hundred percent be the Vikings. They're going to, they're going to move up. Um, how high they move up. We'll see. There's been reports that uh, the Falcons were sniffing around um, on pick one, two, and three at the combine. And all three of those teams told the Falcons GM, uh, Terry Fontenot that we're not moving. We're not budging. So, if you go ahead and you take what we've been hearing about the Arizona Cardinals and their um, their eagerness to trade back and the Minnesota Vikings uh, willingness to move up and their their honestly their the desperation to move up and get a quarterback. I think that's the match made in heaven right there. It's going to be pick number four. Um, I know J.J. McCarthy's pro day was today. I haven't had a chance to really look and see how, how it's going, um, you know, what what the talk is out of there. But. They're gonna they're gonna try uh, as as best as possible to go ahead and maybe get a Drake May or a Jaden Daniels, but if not, they'll take JJ McCarthy. Um, they they need a quarterback. There's no way you can go in thinking Sam Darnold is you know your future. And you know what what better than to do it in a year where you have multiple first round picks, you have the cap space, um, you know, and you're gonna have to sign Justin Jefferson. You have to entice Justin Jefferson to want to resign. So I think that they have a little bit more. Um, you know, they, they, they got to move with a little bit more uh, angst and, and, and willingness to go ahead and get this deal done. Definitely. I think that uh, I, I, I know they had Jaden McCarthy, you guys pro day. I don't think that, that the, that the Vikings have that many people there. I know that they're, they're going to be at the, at the North Carolina one next week. Yeah. Um, I want to go to Dante, man. Dante, uh, who you think is going to, you know, risk their life to go up and get either Drake, Drake, Drake uh, Mayo or Jaden McCarthy. <laughs> Solar. I think it's mainly because of the action of every other team in the division. Like this is building out to be, you know, one of the strongest divisions in football. So you can't fall behind. And um, with the Bears moving on from Justin and going to get Caleb, um, the Packers being the youngest team in the NFL, but they have a lot of young talent. Then you add a Josh Jacobs. Um, <clears throat> you see everything they've done in Detroit and everything they're going to continue to do and build on. So you see that in the year of Minnesota, it's like, okay, no, we have to make a move now. And so I think they're going to be the ones who are going to try to leverage whatever they need to to move up. And I do think it'll probably be a Drake May more than J.J. McCarthy. But um, it's easily, I think it's going to be Minnesota. I think a lot of the other teams uh, are trying to move back, you know, stack assets because they understand that, you know, with the way the NFL is set up, all it takes is really one, maybe two solid off seasons and you can be right back in it. So why rush in and take a reach if you don't have to? So I think you'll see um, <clears throat> the Vikings. Definitely make that move. Uh Mike, we know you 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 don't like any of these quarterbacks. You don't like uh what's my man uh name? Uh Daniel Jones. Uh no, do you think it's gonna be the Giants? So do you think it's you you, you agree with everybody else? It's probably gonna be the Vikings. I, 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 I was saying the I was saying the Vikings. Um I hope it is so we could deal with JJ McCarthy for you know years to come. You know, then <laughs> Jalen Johnson really get a fat contract. 
Um, <laughs> but I, if not the Vikings, which I agree with the rest of the fellas, um, I would say the Giants or maybe the Raiders would take that risk because someone's going to panic because next year draft is most of, most of our defensive draft. There's not that many quarterbacks coming out. I think it's just Shador. Shador you, got, yeah. you got you got Ewers, you know, you might get Carson Jackson Bass, Dart. You probably, ja- Jackson Dart. Jackson Dart. Up there yeah, you get, and, and, and you get you got Buddy from what Penn State. They got him ranked kind of high. I think his name is Drew something. I don't know, but it's not. He really fucking sucks. He right? fucking <laughs> sucks. Drew Allen. Hey, he <laughs> fucking sucks, bro. Oh, my well, that's God. Like Drew, Drew, I, I knew it was something. Oh Drew, Drew Allen. Drew Allen. Right. Drew Allen. So that motherfucker's going to throw for 80 yards. He is ass. Oh so, see what God. I'm saying? So, they, the, the other teams, they're seeing this. Like, like, listen, we might have to go all in just to get one of these quarterbacks because no matter what I say, Drake may still better than a self fiery um, fucking Shador. He's probably better than the, you know, the rest of those quarterbacks far by by far. So someone's going to reach. I would say the Vikings, um, the Giants are in hell, man. I, I honestly, I thought the Giants should have went all in to get fucking um, the number one pick. Cause okay, you get to cut them next year, dead money, you know, saying whatnot. They screwed up by winning that one year. And it's kind of sound bad, like they when they won, they won a playoff game. But yes, you had to pay Daniel Jones. You know Daniel Jones not that good. So now you got to eat the contract. You don't want to play him. Tyrod came in, played way better than him. So it's like, man, the Giants. I think the Giants should have gave him a haul, and I I would have gave the haul and then just okay, you got your quarterback now. Just work on everything else. So I don't think the Giants will move up. I think it's going to be the Vikings. If anybody else, the Raiders. Um, I don't know what they could give up, but I guess they might go out there with Gardner Spenshu. Yeah, I said I call him Spenshu. Um, because he'd be spinning that bitch, bro. <laughs> like that real real shit. So the Raiders will be the only one, but I think it's gonna be the Vikings, which I hope it is. I hope it is. Bang, man, who you think is gonna uh, you know, give their life up for this pick? I don't think nobody will. I mm. think it's mm. a lot of talk, I think it's a lot of conversation, mm. I think it's a lot of peacocking that's going on. Um, the Arizona Cardinals um, head coach, Monty Osori, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, he came out there and, and used the the Ryan Poles. Everybody's using that. You know, uh, we're open for business, and I need to be blown away. Fam, you gra- you drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. Man, let's, 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 let's not do that. So then I look at number five. I look at the Chargers. They're more than likely getting a, a wide receiver, whether that is Neighbors or Odunze. So I think the Giants feel comfortable enough that they could pick JJ at six. Um, I think Jaden Daniels is really sliding into the number two pick. I think if the I think if the Patriots were, I don't even want to say if they were smart. Because I'm of the I'm of the mind if you if you got a quarterback that you see that you want, you go get him. I don't give a damn how many holes on the team you got. You go get him. Um, And I feel like that Gerard Mayo and Pioli and, I mean, not Pioli, um, Wolf, Elliot Wolf and them, I don't think they're not going to come out of this draft without drafting a quarterback. So, you know, there's that. So I don't think nobody is going to have to jump, even though the Vikings, you know, went ahead and got another number one pick. Um, from the Houston Texans, so they got like 11 and 23. I don't think 11 and 23 is going to be enough to jump the Giants. I don't think that the the Chargers are going to 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 look at that and 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 be like, all right, yo, we can move down. I think that would be a bad decision for them because I think they are also in the mode of best player available. So yeah, I think the Giants is going to have a decision to make: should we get one of the wide receivers? Or should we get J.J. McCarthy? And if they were smart, they would get J.J. McCarthy because what if Daniel Jones don't pass a physical? He going anyway. Mm. Uh, Tosa, man, who do you think is going to go out there and, and, and bite the bullet, uh, you know, and go get up there and get, you know, probably McCarthy or Drake May? Sounds like some dumb shit the Raiders would do. Um, <laughs> that's just what the Raiders do is dumb shit. But, um, no, I mean, honestly, like, I just don't like any of these quarterbacks. I just personally wouldn't move up for any one of them. If they land in my lap, they land in my lap. I would never mortgage my future for Drake May or JJ McCarthy. Like I just I just don't see the point of doing that. But honestly, 
I look at the Vikings. I'll just literally just look at the Vikings quarterback room right now. There is nobody in there. I mean, they literally have Sam Donald, Jaron Hall, Nick Mullins. That's it's terrible. Uh, I don't know how you can go into season with that. Like knowing what the NFC North is doing now. So if anybody probably be the, the Vikings, they'll get real desperate and just try to like mortgage their future for that because they need they need a quarterback badly. Yeah, and, and they can't come into this division where you've got Jared Goff, who, you know, they, they are in prime position to, you know, win a division again. They were like a play away. And they were collapsed away from going to the fucking Super Bowl. I never even thought that the fucking Detroit Lions would even be ever be an opportunity to get the Super Bowl. They're going to run it back. I understand they're going to have a, a way tougher schedule. They're going to be playing first place schedule. But then you got that. You got Jordan Love. You got the potential of Caleb Williams. You can't come in there with fucking Sam Darnold. So that's why I feel like they're going to probably go up and get a J.J. McCarthy or a Drake May. I don't. It don't matter who the fuck it is me. We put them through the table twice a year. It don't matter who the fuck the quarterback is. I, I, don't, I don't give a shit. But uh, I want to move on to the 2021 quarterback class because this is the class that was, uh, I won't say highly touted, but people thought it was going to be a pretty good class. Headlined by Trevor Lawrence, a.k.a. Trick Off Trev. Trick Off Trev. Trick Off Trev. Trick Off Trev, as Bane calls him. Uh, he has been the highlight of that class, uh, but he's been up and down uh, in his career. I still think he'll be a good quarterback. I don't know if he'll be as great as people thought he was going to be. Um, but then you have, you know, Zach Wilson, who was drafted number two, complete ass. Uh, you have Trey Lance, who's on his second team right now, third on the fucking depth chart. You've got uh, Mac Jones, who, you know, had a little fake year that everybody fell for. Uh, but I did not fall for Um, Now he's backing up Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville. And I hate to say it, and you have Justin Fields. Uh, with that situation didn't go right now, he's the backup in, um, in Pittsburgh. I look at it like this. To me, this class tells me that, like we've been saying all episode day, drafting a quarterback is a literal fucking toss-up. But at the same time, I also showed you the impatience of today's league, that you're not giving these, these guys opportunity to really grow. I mean, just look at fucking Trevor Lawrence's first year. We talk about the great situation that Caleb's in. Urban Meyer, I could have did a better job than Urban Meyer. Like, Urban Meyer just did not even try his, his one only year that he had in Jacksonville. Then he came back, had a good year with Doug Peterson in year two, made the playoffs, came back and, and, and beat the Chargers, even though they, they were down because he played like shit. They came back, beat the Chargers, and then last year he had an okay year. But once he got hurt, he never really, you know, looked good for the rest of the season. And then we all know the terrible situation that Justin Fields was in. But even Justin Fields should have been drafted much higher than what he was. People over th over th over overthought it. And when Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, woo woo, I feel like that's just the new era we're in where these these guys don't have the opportunity to grow. You know, as good as Jordan Love was last year, he wouldn't have started. He would have started right away if Aaron Rodgers didn't play the same game that fucking Brett Favre played when he was when he was playing. These weren't situations where they were just intentionally sitting Jordan Love like they did Aaron Rodgers. It's because you had a Hall of Fame quarterback in the fucking way. Now, almost every opportunity they're going to start and you're going to need results right away. And that's why you see that class get ruined. So I want to go to Mike first, man. Mike, do you think this class is the class of bust or like a kind of a cautionary tale on how to not um, develop quarterbacks? I say it's 50-50 and, it, and it's on the GMs, it's on the scouter, scouters and everything. Because my thing is this, with Zach Wilson, what was really amazing? They loved the pro day. They loved that he yeah. spent around and just threw the ball a deep pass. It was a beautiful ball. But I don't, I never understood like, the pro days and the combines and shit like that. Okay, you run the 40. Nine times out of 10, you have what? A helmet on. You have pads on. Like, you're not running a straight shot. You know, the Mac, the Mac Jones thing. I think Mac Jones, he probably could have been better if he sit, like you were saying. Some of these quarterbacks, I believe, have to sit. They have to develop. And I think the coaches and the organizations went away with the development of, of some of these players and just like, hey, if you, in the first round, you get the start. No, let them sit for you. Even if it's behind a person that's a, you know, a, a solid backup that's a starter now. Like, let Tyrod Taylor, if Tyrod Taylor was in the situation, let him start. Let him, let the let the uh, rookie quarterback sit, watch, and learn from these guys. And we just went away from that. Like, Mac Jones was never going to be that gunslinger or going to get the ball downfield. You know why? Fucking he played with De De Devontae Smith and all those players. And guess what? Devontae Smith won the Heisman. Usually the person that's throwing to the receiver wins the Heisman. Yeah. Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, oh, Devontae Smith won the Heisman, but Mac Jones is the one that's throwing to him. So, 
it's because Devontae Smith is the one that's getting open. You know what I'm saying? So you you have to see those things. You know, they the risk. Like even the Trevor Lawrence, I still think Trevor Lawrence is good. I think he yes, he had a little setback, but I think next year he would get a little bit better. But I think that just the whole a I always think Trey Lance even got a chance. So we don't even I can't even speak on him. I don't even know what the hell he could do, yes or no. Trey but, Lance sitting behind Cooper fucking Rush. Like he he's third on the fucking depth. Yeah, though. like so but like some of these guys, like it, I think it's fifty fifty. Like I said, you either gotta evaluate these guys better. If it's not there, they should sit. I I talk shit about JJ McCarthy and all these other guys. Let them sit. Bo Nix, JJ McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr. If you draft them, don't put them out there. Let those guys sit. Let those guys learn. Unless you that top notch quarterback, you're Trevor Lawrence, you're fucking um um you're fucking Andrew Luck. Yeah, Cam Newton. You know, unless you those guys, yeah. You know, Caleb Williams. Unless you those guys, everyone else should sit, man. Mikey, man, what's your opinion on this? Do you think, you know, we've had conversations about that class, you know, development. As we all know, as Bears fans, development is a very, it's very a key to, that the Bears haven't had the opportunity to do, I feel. What do you think that this class says? And do you think that franchises will learn from this or they'll just keep doing what they're doing now? Well, we have to remember this is the COVID year. You know, this is the core, the COVID quarterback class. Um, you know, shortened seasons, no pro days. Um, you know, my thing when we look back at the quarterback draft of that year of 2021 is you had one surefire guy at the time, and that was Trevor Lawrence. Now he has been underwhelming. You know, um, I would say up until this point, he hasn't lived up to his billing. Um, but you have what happens when GMs and head coaches are thirsty and starve to try to hit a guy. You have two guys that were overdrafted in Trey Lance mm-hmm. and Zach Wilson. Um, they needed to play more games in college, which they didn't. Um, so what what does that mean, you know, when you're taking people that need more experience? They need to be in a situation where they can sit. Um Trey Lance was drafted with the expectation of replacing somebody that took them to a Super Bowl, Jimmy G. Um, he he wasn't ready. Like he wasn't. He was not ready. He still isn't ready. He was. He really needed to be a draft and stash guy later. You know, in in the draft, but because of his tools and because everybody is chasing, you know, the next Patrick Mahomes. Um, you know, these GMs they just jump out their body and they say, "Fuck it, we're gonna take you know take a chance." Um, you know, Justin Fields and Mac Jones were probably the probably the two. They were the two that slid. They're probably the two that should have been drafted before um, uh, uh, Trey and Zach. Those two both kind of fell into um, poor situations. Um, they were mismanaged. You know, a lot of people forget that Mac Jones really had a good rookie year with Josh McDaniels as his OC. Josh McDaniels under, as the OC understood how to mask Mac Jones deficiencies. Like Mike was saying, um, Mac Jones is a solid quarterback if you're propping him up with A1 players around him like he was in Alabama. Kind of similar to Jalen Hurts, you know. Um, he's not a guy that you're going to go and win because of, you know. He just needs to be a guy to get it to his playmaker. So, you know, Bill Belichick went ahead and tried to replicate this with Matt Patricia and Joe Judge as the old season. That shit doesn't work. And then with Justin Fields, we all saw how that was. So, um, I, if you, you know, to go back to your question of do I think GMs are going to learn? No because this is the hardest position to get right in all of professional sports. And it's the most important position to get right in all of professional sports. So as long as these GMs um, continue, these GMs and these scouts and these coaches, as long as they continue to operate with the, I'm the smartest man in the room mentality, they're going to always take a swing and they're always going to miss. So, um, you know, I look back at it, uh, it. It's crazy because Zach Wilson will probably be on a new team come to come to fall. Justin is on a new team. Mac is on a new team. Trey is on a new team. And Trevor's the only one there. And Trevor, this is going to be the year that they really, you know, uh, put the fire to his ass because he's been underwhelming. Um, you know, it's crazy to see that landscape. But all of them, you can all say that they all do need different situations, too, minus Trevor. Uh, Trevor has enough down there. I just don't know what the fuck they're doing with Doug Peterson. And, you know, they've continued, they've continuously gone and got him weapons, and he just hasn't improved. Uh, Tulsa, man, what's, what's your opinion on the 2021 class? Uh, <clears throat> Big Sean made a song about that, um, and it begins with ass, and you know, the rest <laughs> of the uh, just terrible. I mean, but like you said, it's all development, like, 
we saw it with you know with Lamar. Like when Lamar first came in, nobody really wanted to draft Lamar. We we damn it just waited to the last pick to get Lamar. So we stashed him, and then he developed really well. And the same thing with Pat Mahomes, he developed really well. So I feel a lot of times like these quarterbacks are just throwing in the fire for no reason. And when the shit hits the fan, like oh well, we're gonna get a new project instead. It's like yo, work on the play that you have. Like you literally just picked up a player for no reason and just didn't develop him. And we see it like in every other position too. Like look at Justin Matabike. We had him third round pick, developed him really well. Kick out a big ass contract this summer because he developed really well. But a lot of times these players just aren't properly developed. And it goes into not just football. It's like other sports as well and other things in general. Like you can see it in music. Like a lot of these artists aren't developed. So we're not properly developing like people to be successful. And you're seeing it with these quarterbacks. Like why is Trey Lance a third string quarterback? Like he was supposed to be somewhere good in, in the Niners, but now he's behind, uh, what's it called? He's the third string quarterback in Dallas. He's not going to do well in the NFL. It sucks at this point. So yeah, that draft class was just truly just a product of just bad timing and just bad product of from everybody. I'm going uh, I'm to I'm kind of frame the question a little bit for Dante here. Dante, uh, I, I, I think I know who your answer is going to leave. Who do, who do you think out of the, out of the quarterbacks, outside of Trevor, obviously, who have the best opportunity, who, 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 who you believe can get past that and can at least have a really, really good career. Do you think it can be Justin, Cam Mack Jones, maybe he'll be good in backup? I do think <laughs> Trevor's probably going to miss a couple games. Or, or, or what do you think is going to happen with that in the class in general? Um, I mean, I, I'm giving my Justin Fields thoughts week after week, so obviously I think he can still go out there and become a successful starter. But – um. I actually think Mac Jones can become, you know, a successful professional. And I know, you know, for some people that may not mean, you know, an everyday starter. But when you look at um, the fact that they brought in, they had at one point the fucking special teams coach was in charge of his development. Like, it it, it was bad uh, the last couple of years up there in uh, New England. So, uh, with Matt, I would say Mac um, had the opportunity to go down there with Doug Peterson, like you said, Trevor Lawrence is going to miss some games just because that's what he's done the last few years. So he'll get a chance to get in there and show himself when he does. And uh, I think he has it, you know, he'll set the tone for his career as a backup. I think he'll be a great football holder, but I think he'll be somebody that, you know, he'll definitely end up bouncing around. But I think that class as a whole, like, this is a product of the way we put emphasis on the rookie court, uh, the rookie contract. If you could really sit there and develop your quarterback, Nine times out of ten, if you have to sit for two years and you're coming in on year three of that deal, and a lot of teams don't want to do that. Like you know, the Packers, they've shown you that it works, but most teams don't have the patience over Green Bay, so they're not going to ever do that. So I think that's why you're seeing such an emphasis on, you know, we need to see you shine right now because we're trying to get as many players in here as we can on these on these big deals while we're still paying you pennies. So uh, I think that's part of why we've seen that, and so unfortunately, that class was a, you know. They all they all lot bust right now. You can say it. It is what it is. You know, right now they all lot bust outside of Trevor. And for me, it's crazy because you know I've been living in Georgia, so I've heard about Trevor Lawrence since he was like four, twelve years old. Like 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 he's football Jesus down there. So they they had already told you that he was going to be the next Peyton Manning and all of that. So that's why that's part of the reason he's getting all this leeway because they just like the kid. Like that that's something that everybody else in this class did not have that Trevor has. But uh, to answer your question, I'll probably say Matt. Uh, Bang, man, take us home on this topic. Um, let's what Trey, uh, trick off Trez, number one or number one or number one A prospect since he was shorty, like Dante said. Um, Trey Lance, people got to remember, he only played like one, like four games since high school. Or it's four games between like his senior year of high school and that year he had in North Dakota. Either way it go, he didn't even have reps. Like people, people was looking at him straight off of potential alone. So, you know, that's what gets you right there. Um, but the biggest thing is, and I said it before, it's the contract situation. Like, you know, when when bef- starting with Sam Bradford on the back. You know, quarterbacks came in and they got a boatload of money. I think like Sam Bradford was one of the first players to get a hundred million dollar contract. It was some shit like that, but he got a whole bunch of money. So, you know, when ownership got away from being able to have to shell out those big ass contracts to quarterbacks right off the bat, you know, the contract became cheaper. 
So you can still put the investment in there. But also I think about it like this too. Um, you don't necessarily have to get them a second contract. Running backs are in a sim to me and, and QBs are in a similar situation depending on the talent that the quarterback has. I don't have to be patient, especially if I run into a situation where the quarterback class is dope. I could go ahead and just get rid of this dude and then just go ahead and grab me another one and I could still spend money elsewhere. So, you know, they're just more glamorized because, you know, the position that they play. But there are quarterbacks who, outside of the Daniel Jones luck up, do feel like, yo, y'all run out of patience with me. And now I'm on the outside looking in and shit. And I look at that draft class. That's pretty much what it is. Trevor Lawrence played well enough to get his second contract. Justin Fields did not. Daniel Jones did not. Um, Trey Lance, I don't know what the hell is going on. Um, so it was just easier to move on from those players. But Mac Jones, I do believe he has talent. Like we said. He ran into a situation where a former defensive coordinator and a, um, a special teams coordinator um, who both just got fired from their jobs is looking to develop you. That's malpractice. Definitely, man. Uh, one last football topic, then we're going to get Tosin out of here and we're going to close the show up talking about this Otani scandal. <laughs> but uh, I want to talk about – I want to rank. I want to do a little rank them here, a game of rank them, man. I want to rank the, the, the top NFL duos – in the NFL. Now, one of the duos I have on this list is still yet to play together. So we just going, you know, project what we think we're going to be. So we're going to have, we got Jamar Chase and T Higgins. Now, like I said earlier, we don't know if T Higgins is going to be on the roster. I assume he will be, he'll probably going to be pissed off because they don't want to trade him. But I'm assuming he's going to still be on the, on the Bengals by the time training camp kicks off. So you got Jamar Chase and T Higgins. You got Minnesota, Justin Jefferson who wants a contract and Jordan Addison. Uh, in Philadelphia, you got A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith. Uh, in L.A., out here, we got Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. Uh, you got Tyreek Hill and Jaden Waddle in the 305. And then in Chicago, we got the new duo of D.J. Moore and Keenan Allen. I'm going to rank how I see these uh, five, and then I'm going to go around the room and see how everybody else has their rankings. I'm going to start off with the best wide receiver room in football to me is, is Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, I feel. It's just a perfect balance. Of each other, I think T. Higgins can be a number one on another team. Um, I'm not too sure about you know the other guys. I mean, they they can, but I don't know. I'm not as feel strong about them as I do with T. Higgins, and I feel like together they just complement each other so well. Um, number two, I'm gonna go with Tyree Kill and um and Jaden Waddle. Tyree Kill, I believe if he didn't get hurt uh, last year, would have probably at least broke the 2,000 yard record uh, last year. He has a perfect. Um, combination with Jalen Waddle as well. And those two, I believe, saved Tua's ass each and every Sunday. And not that I don't think that Tua is a good quarterback. I do. But to me, he the way people talk about, and I know it's going to probably sound hot take -ish, the way people talk about Brock Purdy, I feel like it's what we need to be talking about uh, Tua, in, in my personal opinion. like He is more of a product of his wide receivers and Mike McDaniel's amazing play caller. So I'm going to go with them number two. Number three, I'm going to go uh, with A.J. Brown and uh, Devonta Smith at number three just because of, you know, I don't want to say they saved Jalen. I'm not going to say Jalen's really, really good. But those dudes are, are, are game breakers. Uh, A.J. Brown is what took the uh, the Eagles from a really good team to Super Bowl contender once again after, you know, the post-Carson Wentz, Nick Foles era. And like you just brought up, uh, Mike, Devonta Smith won the damn Heisman and when, when Matt Jones was the guy throwing to him. So that just shows you just how good he is. Now, my next one. I'm probably going to be a homer here. I have, I have no problem with that. Based off potential, I think it will be um, – oh, who, who got that TV on? There we go. <laughs> so I think off potential, it will be Keenan Allen and DJ Moore. DJ Moore and Keenan Allen just because of the situation we have here. Well, you've got two wide receivers who both had 1,000 yards last year, and you have a quarterback in Caleb Williams with the potential, and that the way that they're going to be trying to make Caleb look good, I think they're going to have – the most opportunities there because I believe the Bears are going to be throwing the football a lot. So that's why I got them. And then we got the last two uh, rooms. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison next. I think that is a great combination right there. I think Justin Jefferson is probably the best wide receiver in football. Um, 
I know that he is is upset about his situation right now. I feel like the Vikings, if they're not fucking idiots, that they will give him the money that he deserves. He's a guy who's come out and has done what he did in college and has done even even a uh, bigger level. And Jordan Addison has shown you the reason why Caleb Williams' numbers wasn't as fantastic before because he was the number one option at USC. And then he's now over here and he had a pretty good rookie season last year. And I'm going to put Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup number two in the uh, final of uh, the five. And the only reason I got them final is because – I hope that Cooper Cup still has it. You know, he got hurt a lot last year. You know, wasn't the same Cooper Cup from the Super Bowl year. So if he can be the Cooper Cup of old, then yeah, I'll probably put them a little higher. But Puka Nakua, man, he had a, a great off, great rookie season. I think he's just gonna be um, better and better. Um, Mike, I'm gonna go to you. What, what do what do you rank uh, these wide receiver groups? I kind of al- almost pretty much agree with you. I would have had. Um, Tyreek and Jalen Waddle number one easily if they didn't have a quarterback that had a noodle for an arm. Like it would it would have been easily them. So and um so I would agree with you. I would say Jamar Chase and T Higgins is number one. I'm probably one of few people, and this is not knocking Justin Jefferson. I don't know why I just like Jamar Chase more. I, I don't know what it is. It just it's not a hot take. On, on, on a quick hitch or something like he's housing that bitch. I don't know and. Like JJ still cold though. Jettas is still cold. Don't get me wrong. So, I would say uh, Jamar Chase and T Higgins, uh, number one. I would go with Tyreek Hill and Jaden Waller. That speed on both of those guys is just amazing. Like the the speed is what you know is what's helping or hurting fucking um, Tua because they just run so goddamn fast and they know that they can't throw that that far. So I would say that that would be number two. Um, I don't know about the DJ Moore King Allen thing, so I'm not going to rank that because I haven't I haven't seen it. Like individually, yes. You know, Keenan Allen Keenan Allen had what 108 catches, almost 1,300 yards, and he only played like 13 games. So that's that's fucking amazing. So number three, I will go with AJ Brown, Devontae Smith. Like I said, got one big guy on the outside, the other one very, very fast. Uh, Devontae Smith, I know when he was coming in the draft, coming in the league, they worried about his weight. I think they was like they was it was rumored at first that man was 160 pounds or some shit like that. But um, it just showed you that he's still talented. He's he's making a name for himself. He's definitely improving. And then um, and then I would go with Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison just for sake that Jordan Addison just got to show it again. You know, he was a rookie last year. He definitely had a good rookie, rookie season. And Justin Jefferson and Justin Jefferson, so he kind of pulls most of the weight. Puka and Cooper, to me, they're the same fucking receiver. That that's yeah. the only reason. It, it's just the same receiver. They're small. They small. They run excellent routes, and they know how to get open, which is great. And then they got Matthew Stafford throwing to him. But in all in all, be all like these are still some. All of our dynamic duos. It's kind of hard to like rank them, but obviously we have to. So I'll go with Jamar first. Um, a, um, Jamar first. Tyreek and Jalen second. AJ Brown and Devontae Smith fourth. Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. And then I'm gonna go Puka and Cooper, and I just didn't do DJ Moore and Keenan Allen because I just I got you haven't really seen that much. Well, their combined numbers is with DJ and Keenan Allen combined from last year was 204 receptions, 2,600 yards, 607 yards, and 15 touchdowns. I think DJ had like seven, and um, uh, Keenan had eight. Um, Tosin, how how do you, do you are your rankings that much farther the, different than mine? Or how how you got these? Yeah, we we all basically the same. I mean, I've seen what Jamal and T do. Twice a year, yeah. unfortunately for me. Uh, <laughs> God bless Marlon Humphrey and Brandon Stevens. Bless their hearts. Uh, again, Ty, uh, Ty and Jalen, I've seen what, they, what they've done against us, too. They beat our ass, and we also beat them, especially last year. That was fun to see. But again, like back to um, the quarterback situation. I don't have anything bad to say about Tua, but that boy's arm is – it ain't it ain't the strongest, tell you that much. Um then I have um, AJ and Devonta just because, you know, those two are just freakish. Whenever AJ wants to, whenever AJ doesn't feel like tweeting like a punk, like he always does, he's a really good <laughs> receiver. But AJ, I don't know, man, he needs to get his, he need to get his head in the game. One of the funniest things about Devonta is like, I'm the first time I heard him speak. I was like, yo, you are country as hell. Like, yeah, he's God. super Bama. Yeah, that man is an absolute Bama. Um, then, like I said, like I, you know, like he said, I haven't really seen um, DJ and what's it called play together, so I can't really rank them. Right. Um, Puka, uh, Puka, and Cooper literally, like, you know, except for the, you know, they literally the same person. It's like one A, one B, literally the same exact person. So, yes, all of our rank is basically similar. I mean, as long as we all have, I think Jamar and T is number one because 
those two are just absolutely fucking freakish. But I definitely want to see more out of Jordan. I think Jordan Addison was is a really, really good receiver. Actually, Loki won him in Baltimore, but I'm glad we got Zay instead. So, yeah. Yes, yeah, Zay, Zay, I like Zay. Zay had a good rookie year. I think he got a good uh, future with him, too. Uh, Mikey, I'm going to frame the question a little different for you because I feel like we've all pretty much, for the most part, got the same, uh, you know, list. What are your projections for Keenan and DJ Moore, and how high do you feel like they can get on the rankings? Hmm. Projections wise, I would like them to be, and this was like my honorable mention because, like, I I agree that we all were kind of like in unison with them, except I had um, Tyreek and Jalen one and uh, Jamar and T two. Um, I would like to see them complement each other, like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Um, I think that's a, a another. Um, underappreciated wide receiver tandem. Um, I believe DJ Moore is better than Chris Godwin, but DJ Moore knows how to hit, kind of get into them soft spots in the zone and the same with Keelan Allen. And they're able to, you know, uh, Chris Godwin and, and DJ uh, Moore are similar in being able to get yards after the catch. Um, so I would like to see some type of production from there. I don't know who's going to lead um, out of those two in interception or, or in touchdowns. I don't know if it might be somebody like Keenan Allen, just more because of his build. Um, but for me, I think that we can for sure still have another situation where um, they might not both obviously have 1300 yards passing. If they do that, then Caleb is going to blow whatever passing numbers we said earlier out the water. Um, but I think we're going to have for sure two 1100 yard receivers or maybe one be at 13, one be at 11, but the other one, whichever one has the the least amount of yards is going to have more touchdowns. Um, I just think it's going to be, a you know, uh, really nice to see for us. Um, we're actually, the Chicago Bears are actually stepping into modern day football now. Like, I feel like we have an actual legitimate shot when we line up against most teams. Um, I would like to see what they do at, you know, wide receiver three. But for Keenan and um, and DJ Moore, I think they both can be Pro Bowl wide receivers. I think it could be the same way that we see in seasons where A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith both hit Pro Bowls or Jalen Waddle and Tyreek both get Pro Bowl appearances. I think that's something that we can get out of uh, that tandem. Uh, so, uh, bang Dante, man, I'm gonna go bang first. Then Dante, do you have any problem with those, any changes with the list or do, how you think about, you know, these top wide receivers? Nah, man, Jamar Chase or T Higgins is number one on my list. Um, Justin Jefferson and Justin Jefferson, just because it's Justin Jefferson, that boy Cole. Um, that, um, the, the, the Eagles is the one that I may question a bit because, Smith, kind of like tailed off a little bit. Um, Puka and Cup, they are the same wide receiver, and they both cold. Um, Tyreek Hill and Jaden Waddle, Jalen Waddle, if healthy, like they would be higher up there for me if healthy. And I do think that DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, I think that they have the potential to get at least top three on this list. All right, Dante, take us home. What you think about these wide receivers? Uh, I mean, I agree. The moment. I do, but in the, um, I'm really mad Kirk Cousins left Minnesota because I think that Justin Jefferson and Brian um, and Addison, Jordan Addison had the potential to be the best duo in the league. I agree, you know, Jamar and T and everything we see them do, but I think both of them are really dope, especially Jordan Addison. I know he showed flashes last year, especially after Justin Jefferson went down, but <clears throat> the fact that their quarterback situation is so up in the air, I think they'll be, you know, They'll be a great duo, but they won't be what they can potentially be. And um, I agree with Mike about Jalen Waddle and uh, Tariq Hill because with that type of speed, uh, it's tough to to defend it, no matter what they do. But uh, like you said, when your quarterback has limitations, so it's oh so much they can do. But overall, I think that you know that list is solid. I would just say going forward, I expect Jefferson and Addison for as long as they're together, they'll start to climb up that list. Definitely, man. Uh, Tosin, man, we we. Appreciate you for coming on, bro. Uh, let them know where they can get in tune with you, where they can follow you, anything, you know, any projects, anything you're working on at the moment. Yeah, uh, follow us at Shirtless Plantain Show. Um, that's where we're going to do a lot of, like, the soccer content stuff we got going on. Um, and my personal Twitter is, like, T-S-N-M-K-N-D. Uh, so if y'all want to follow me on there. Um, but, yeah, trying to get more people into soccer. That's really all we're trying to do around here, especially, like, black people. So that's what we're trying to do. 
Definitely, man. Definitely, definitely got to have you back on the show soon. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get you out of here. Bang, you're going to be back for the local hour because we're going to talk a little baseball to close this thing up. Hey, so, man, well, show honey ain't do it. That's all I got. <laughs> that man hey. called him show honey. Hey, before we leave, apparently they said that man was betting in New York. He was uh, going up up to the Bronx and was betting up there. It was like shooting dice, apparently. I just read that on Twitter. So He, 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 getting, he getting his Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Hey, hey real quick, real quick. Yeah. Uh, a duo that's going to be nice, you know, it, Nico and Tank Dale. Remember that one. That they, Once once if Tank Dale come back too? up to Andrew Good, yeah, I like Nico and Tank Dale. All yeah. right, man. Uh, Toast, man, we going to holler at you, bro. All right, y'all be easy. Peace. Yes, sir. So let's get into this, uh, you know, the, the, this this baseball situation, man. So of course, Shohei Otani is in the topic of the news right now, and not because what you thought he'd be the topic of with the, the L.A. Dodgers getting their season started, you know, a week ahead of time, which is a little weird to me. Um, I didn't know that until I was informed by our baseball collective uh, here, man. And by the way, we got some dope dropping for y'all on uh, the Patreon next week. Uh, we got the uh, I'm not gonna hold you the hot corner. Uh, baseball divisional pre- breakdown pod. It, it was me, Courtney, uh, Mikey, and Dante. Man, uh, there's gonna be a lot of baseball content coming from the crew this summer. But um, I'm gonna give Mikey the floor on this. I'm Mike. I'm pretty sure you have a better description of everything that's going on with this Shohei Otani situation. I don't want to leave anything out. So uh, tell the people what's going on with, with, with Mr. Otani right now. Well, right now. Um... Damn, Colorado just gained Florida at the buzzer. March Madness, baby. Uh, and Auburn's about to lose. Um, well, right now with Otani, um, you know, basically it came out that um, that his interpreter, uh, Ipe, um, was basically being uh, investigated in a, in a grander case um, for an illegal um, gambling uh, syndicate in California. Uh, where basically he had racked up a, a certain amount of debt, almost $4.5 million in debt, in which he came out saying that, you know, he told Otani and Otani, you know, that he ran into debt and Otani was going to go ahead and pay for his, um, you know, pay for his losses. So there is records of uh, wire transfers from Shohei Otani's personal account to this bookmaker, Um you know, for making payments. There were two payments that were made for $500,000 each. And right now, you know, we're really still in the fact, um, you know, the the fact collecting and information gathering. Um, But clearly the Dodgers uh, didn't want that around. So they went ahead and they fired Ipe uh, Mizuhara, um, Shohei Otani's uh, interpreter. And for those that don't know, this is, this man has been with Otani since 2018 when he came to the United States. He's been an interpreter for the Angels. They sit down together every day and they go over, um, you know, over film, over pitching analytics, over hitting analytics. You know, they're they're best friends. They travel on the road together. They're always together. So um, regardless of of what Otani's involvement in, whether he was the one gambling and his interpreter is the one falling on the sword or, you know, the interpreter was the one gambling, it's hard to think that, people that spend so much time together don't know about, you know, what's going on. So, um, you know, it has come out that there were no wagers placed on major league baseball. Um, the wagers were on international soccer, uh, college football, NFL, and, uh, some NBA. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where we're at right now. And as of today, major league, uh, baseball is now officially launching them, you know, their investigation into it, um, into, you know, collecting all the facts So we have to, you know, assume that, you know, Tani and, you know, his people will be, you know, soon meeting with, uh, Rob Manfred and, and those people and the MLBPA and, you know, so will, uh, the interpreter, um, because this is a, this is a, this is a pretty big case, you know, regardless of, if Otani was the one gambling, it still happened in a state where or if he was or he wasn't or Ipe was and, and Otani was paying. It still happened in a state where gambling is still deemed illegal. Um, so any payments to an illegal bookmaker would still be deemed illegal. So there was obviously a, a you know, a, a law broken here. And now it's trying to gather all of the information and seeing, you know, who really is at fault and who's being um, you know led astray. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, too, because it's like, I don't know who's to blame here. 
Like there, there was some law that was broken, obviously. So I don't want to say Shohei did this or whoever did that, even though it kind of does feel like he his, his, his boy falling on the sword for him. But I will say this about the situation. There's two things I take from this. One is we're getting more into the gambling world where it's being advertised more. I mean, media uh, companies are being promoted, are being sponsored by gambling companies. Shit, fucking ESPN. ESPN is talking about this with the ESPN bet logo on the right-hand corner of the fucking screen. I do think there's a lot of uh, fake conversation about the state of gambling right now because I feel like people are fake caring about this shit. Like, and not to say all people, I'm just going off a couple things. Like, I don't think people give a fuck about gambling the way they want people to think they give a fuck about gambling. Oh, this is going to be an even bigger problem. And I'm not saying that it's not, but you, you don't really care. A lot of people are just mad about this situation because Shohei Otani didn't pick their goddamn team. Let's, let's just let's just call a spade a spade. We can even go to 30 years ago with the Michael Jordan thing. A lot of that was we need to find something to tear Michael Jordan down because he looks so fucking squeaky clean. And so, like, with Shohei Otani, his relationship with the media, a lot of people were upset about how he went away, went away, went away his, his, uh, his free agency, not speaking to the media and things of that nature. So I feel like that has some part to do with it. And I also feel like people are doing too much of this. We're saying, well, we need to get rid of this right now where it's not legal everywhere. And I just don't feel like that's a fair conversation to have because I don't think people really care about that. Like if we're going to talk about the problems that gambling has, and y'all correct me if y'all think I'm wrong or not. I feel like it's, it's, it's everybody has a vice. Do vices go too far? Yeah. We see alcohol ads all the damn time. I don't see Thank motherfuckers, you. you know, getting, you know, up in arms about alcohol. Like, every niggas is professional we is. And not that I see I have a problem with that, but that's the drug, too. Everybody has a vice. So why are we acting like uh, betting is so much worse than any of these other things going? This is from somebody who drinks a lot. But let's just be real about the fucking situation here. And we just need to get into what you're really, really mad about. And for the MLB's perspective, I get why they're upset because in the MLB rules, you cannot uh, bet on the game of baseball. So I get that. But let's just have the actual conversation that we're trying to have here. It's not about betting. Is you're upset about Shohei Otani? That's really what it comes down to. Now, as far as Otani and his interpreter, whoever did it, whether it was Shohei or his interpreter, y'all niggas need to have a better game plan. <laughs> like that should have been uh, 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 somebody just said, all right, what are we going to say? Like, because you can't come out here and say, oh, this was on me, but Shohei, um, you know, transferred money to me. And then like not too long later, oh, well, he never had anything to do with the money. It don't smell right. I'm not investigating. Even I know that shit. So right. whoever did it, they need to get their fucking story straight. Do I think anything will happen to Shohei? No, they're going to protect him just like, you know, the M NBA did Michael Jordan. They protected Michael Jordan. Like, he didn't get suspended. You know, the, the long myth of he got suspended. If you thought that David Stern will take his biggest asset and suspend that nigga, it doesn't make any sense. The MLB is not going to take their biggest asset, which is Shohei Otani, and suspend him, whether that was wrongdoing or not. We know the MLB don't give a fuck. So to wrap my opinion up on this, I just think people need to have more of a sincere conversation on what we really mad about, because I don't think niggas really care about the fucking gambling. Go ahead, Mike. Right, so like you said, it's not like they're going to do anything anyway. You know, it's going to be swept under the rug. He's the biggest star. They're not going to let that money go down the drain. Like, MLB don't give a fuck. Like, when the steroid era was there, everybody, who blah, all that's bad. If it was so fucking bad, give the money back. <laughs> give the money back. When exactly. The era, give the fucking money back then. Guess what? You're not because your ratings go up. Shohei or Tiny comes in town. The Dodgers, the jersey sales, everything. Like, no matter if he did it, I, like, honestly, like you said, the only reason why it would be, in my eyes, like, wrong, because, like uh, Mike said, in the state of California, you can't gamble. But to me, honestly, if you're not even gambling on, if you're not gambling on your sport, go ahead and gamble. Do what the fuck you want to do. I don't care what you do in your spare time, as long as you ain't murdering people, molesting people, all that other crazy shit. Do what the hell you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Scott said, you have a vice. Like, you know, people smoke weed, people, you know what I'm saying, they drink, they gamble, like, that's the normal fucking American way. You know what I'm saying? But they're not going to take away the biggest asset. He just signed this big contract, and trust me, if he did it, somebody's going to take the blame. Yep. And that's just that's just what's going down. So I don't really, you know, care. I did, Do I think he did it? I don't know. I don't really, you know, say give a fuck. 
if the, the interpreter is going down for it, I'm pretty sure he's going to be well paid off for, for going down oh, for it. So, oh, he's he going to be know. rich forever. Otani going to look out for his boy. Right. So, 100%. You know, I just, I just want to know, how did they find this out, and where did they go snooping to find this out? So so the guy, the basically the, the bookmaker in California, okay. he's already been under investigation. So mm-hmm. there, this is like a larger thing um, that scales back with like some MLB player, like we're not MLB players, but with some other people in Las Vegas, like this is a whole big conglomerate. Um, so, you know, they, they start doing bank research, you know, while this guy is fighting his case and you start seeing wire transfers from Shohei Otani. And they literally said on the, on the wire transfer, Otani. So Ota, uh, Otani means loan in Japanese. So like it's kind of like it's kind of crazy like you know like oh, it just yeah, so yeah, happens yeah. that it happens to be that so the the bookmaker also would use Otani's name he never said that Shohei Otani like like and he would never say that Shohei Otani bet with him like he knew who he was but he used that to prop up his organization to get more people in and betting and stuff with him so it's it's, it's, it's a, a whole yeah, it's a whole big thing where they got caught in the middle of it. Um, I know his imp- interpreter makes five hundred thousand dollars a year. So if you're talking about two payments of five hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, like you know, it will come. We'll come to see what happens. But maybe Otani's just really a good dude. Like, listen, like this is all your money. Like you literally yeah, gambled away. Yeah, you gambled away all your money. I'll I'll front you on that. But you know, I I, I want to know like and kind of like to Scott's to Scott's point about the av- the 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 alcohol advertisement even like the cigarettes we're just seeing it in real time you know i'm a gambler and i've i've you know i made my first bet when i was 19 years old you know like this has been a long this has been around forever you know my my father would gamble everybody gambling has been around for ages i just think now that it's socially acceptable and now these states are collecting taxes on it we're seeing the live effect of what our grandparents were seeing, you know, when alcohol commercials were coming out, when cigarettes and Newports and, 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 and you know, uh, Camel 100 commercials were coming out and advertising. Yes, it's very bad. Kids can see it, but we're just going through it right now. And um, it's just a really big uh, financial, um, you know, monster where it brings in so much revenue that it's hard. Like, I think to myself that it's still, I think to myself that it's still very, um, like, I think it's it's getting a little overboard because, like, you know, I got, like, my godson. He's, like, a junior in high school, and he's sending me prize pick tickets and shit, you know? And, like, I'm not promoting that shit. I've never told him that, you know? But, like, it's there. It's the same way as, like, when I was 16 years old, like, I had my first pull of, you know, of, of the blunt, you know? Like, I had my first, you know, I remember the first alcoholic beverage I had with some Bacardi. And, and, and it, wasn't, it wasn't a 21 either. <laughs> you know what? I, no, no, no. I was 17, you know, I was 16 yeah. years old and I had my first cup of Bacardi Limon, like a true Puerto Rican, you know? So, like, <laughs> I under, I understand what it, what is happening. Um, And, you, you know, like Scott said, a lot of people are disingenuous. Like, I really don't give a fuck. Like, I'm, I'm going to stay consistent on my Shohei Otani rant from early in the year. What a man does in his personal life is on his, you know, in his personal life. Like as long as it's not on baseball and it's not messing with the integrity of that game, then he should be able to do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Dante, man, what you think about this scandal going on? Uh, I think the scandal is really a non-starter. Like leagues can't take money from gambling, uh, gambling, gambling outfits and then sit here and say, oh, no, that's not right. You know, that's hypocritical as fuck. Um, as for Shohei, I don't think anything will happen to him. I do think um, the first statement we got was probably the truest statement we got. When his homie was just a fucking gambling addict and Shohei said, fuck it, I'm rich, nigga, I'll pay it off for you. Yeah. And then he just walked it back after the fact that that just don't look good. Like, you knew that your homie was gambling through an illegal bookie and you let it keep going. So that just didn't look good on that end. But the whole gambling thing, no, nah, this shit is a problem. Like, it's a problem. Don't get me wrong. I, you, as anybody that's been following us for years, you know my <laughs> vice is and what I do. But we, we can see with, it. Uh, we can see it. You know. <laughs> yeah, I would say it. But um, with <laughs> with the gambling, bro, it's a little different, just because with when you have things like alcohol, or weed, and certain shit like that, you can always hit that wall where it's like, all right, I can't. You literally, your body won't let you keep going. But with gambling, you can borrow and borrow 
and rob peter to pay paul and leverage this books. and leverage that and so it's get, it's gonna get to a point and i think you know here we are we really only you know a few years into it and now 40 out of 50 states have it we're gonna get to a point where it's like back in the day when motherfuckers are losing their houses losing their cars really going overboard ODing with this shit, and we're gonna see that happen i think with the athletes uh we're probably a year or two away from our first, even though this is a big scandal, but I think this one will be swept under the rug. From our first, like, real big, like, point shaving, this motherfucker did this. Like, NIL probably makes, you know, takes a little bit of the heat off of it, so you don't have as many college athletes who want to, like, point shave and do shit like that. But it'll get to a point where the money gets big enough and you're going to have people doing that. And so I right. think just the more you have these leads continuing to accept money from the gambling outfits, it's hard for you to sit here and really try to police this shit and say, bro, you can't do this, you can't do that. Like you said, obviously, I think the only thing you shouldn't be able to do is bet on a team that you play for because you directly affect those results. But to right. sit here and try to be like, no, y'all can't gamble when we all know, like anybody with sense probably has a homie of a homie or somebody make the bet for them. Like it's it, it's plenty of ways out there for them to bet. So that, that shouldn't be the thing, bro. Like. Yeah, and this and this just came through right now. Um, you know, Major League Baseball has opened a formal investigation. Oh shit! Damn, OnlyFans pop up. Major League <laughs> Baseball. <laughs> Major League Baseball has opened a formal investigation into the matter surrounding Los Angeles Dodgers superstar Shohei Otani and his former interpreter Ife Mizuhara. MLB is expected to request interviews with all parties, including Otani and Mizuhara. A source told ESPN. Although officials will have no way to compel Mizahara's co cooperation since he no longer works for baseball. So he really doesn't need to speak to them. Otani, Otani also has a right to refuse cooperation as a member of the MLB Player Association. Otani could also invoke under his right um, an interpretation of arbit arbitration precedent to refuse cooperation because of a criminal investigation that's already away. Um, he also will be... Um, as as far as it's being reported, unless something dramatic happens where it flat out comes out that Otani was the one gambling, um, he's going to remain on the Dodgers active roster and will continue to play while this investigation goes on because administrative leave only applies to the domestic violence policy. Let's be very clear. There'll be P. Rose pissed off. off. Yeah, <laughs> but see, but right, but see, but P Rose was betting on, oh, but P man. Rose was betting on his team, you know. Was, but I would, I would have wanted that shit too. I don't, I don't gotta talk to y'all. What the fuck is a player? Right, right. Man, yeah. fuck that. He bad as hell right now. P Rose, was, he be pissed off. Well, Free this, P Rose, man. <laughs> This is going to be the last time we talk about this topic, I'm, I'm pretty sure, man. Uh, we're going to wrap up today's episode. Uh, Mike, thank you for joining us a, 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 as usual, man. Uh, you can follow Mike at, at Please Say the Baby on all social media platforms. Of course, get in tune with our, with our sponsors, man, Pillars. Go to PillarsClub.co right now. Visit uh, the Instagram, Pillars underscore club, and you can visit any of the three uh, locations in the Chicagoland area. Mike, is there anything you want to – Promo anything y'all got, specials, whatever you want to talk about before we get you about it. All right, we got in the store. We got some $20 shirts, shorts, $13 pocket tees, stuff like that. Just stop on through. Stop on through, man. Build with the guys, man. Uh, me, Mikey. Don, Don, are you joining us for the local hour? You finna go uh, hit some, hit some, 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 no, no, no. It's it's for it's me. I got time. I'm gonna be I'm, I'm get you out. You out west with us. I mean, you still you still yeah. got time, man. So we about to uh do the local hour. Uh, you know, you can get into the local. I'll subscribe right now, patreon.com backslash Barbara's Chat Network. You can subscribe to the $5 I'm not gonna hold you till, or you can subscribe to the $10 I'm not gonna hold you all access. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm Barbara's Chat all access tier. We have everything on this new episode of Summer Sessions up right now. We're gonna have a new episode on Tuesday. We're gonna have a deep dive of the Freaknik documentary. I've got some thoughts. <laughs> on, on, on that documentary that I saw last night. Good documentary, but I have some thoughts. Yeah, we'll talk I, about that. Go ahead, Dante. I'm a, we need to have a conversation about the the men in our community. When I say I'm talking about black folks, age 45 to 65. Because, like you, I got some thoughts. You know, yeah, I got some thoughts too. 
It's some thoughts about them niggas, but we it's, gonna, it's some know, thoughts we about them about niggas. It, 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 was, it was a lot of Deshaun Watson shit going on and, and, right, and, and, and on Freak Nick, but we we gonna talk about that. So on the Patreon Scoosu, uh look while we're gonna be recapping uh Caleb Williams Pro Day, you know how we feel about that and everything that came from that. We're gonna talk about DJ Moore and Jalen Johnson's uh comments these last couple days on Caleb Williams. We're gonna talk about is the NFC North the best division uh, in football, man. Uh, and then also I'm going to get what I talked to Mike and Joe about. We're going to get their opinions, Mikey, Dante, and Bang, on whether they, whether they think that Caleb is ready for Chicago fans, Chicago media, uh, the Chicago sports landscape. is the, Are the Bears ready? Are Bears fans ready for the superstar element that's going to come uh, with Caleb Williams being on the team and subscribe to the Patreon to take that up. That should be up sometime tonight. Uh, I'm going to edit that as soon as we finish that. So I should, I'm, I'm try to have it up by 9 p.m. Eastern. So we'll see how that goes, man. Y'all can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Barber Chair Scott. Y'all can follow Barber's Chair Network at Barber's Chair Net on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, follow HB Media. Uh, HB Media TV on Twitter, HB Media on Instagram, and like I said earlier, get in tune with our get in tune with our sponsors, Pillars, uh, PillarsClub.co, Pillars underscore Club on Instagram, and of course visit any of their three locations. Mike, what's the uh, West Loop address? I don't fuck it up. It's uh, 1167 West Madison Street. 1167 West Madison Street, and of course you can visit the Chicago Ridge location and the Orland Park uh, location, man. So uh, we're going to holler at y'all on Monday, and shout out 816 people in the chat, in the stream today. We went from two weeks ago, we were having only 50 people in the stream, <laughs> in the stream. We had 860, so we appreciate all y'all it's supporting me. the game. <laughs> you can't shoot him, whatever. Go Cubs! We, <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate everybody who's been supporting uh, the team, and we back on Monday. Uh, no show next Friday, but we'll be back on Monday. So, Dante, take us, take us about we it. Move. We, we move. We, we move. move.